Okay, thank okay, you. Good luck. Okay, everybody, you can log on. Great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, technology. All right, we good to go? We're good to go. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the regular meeting of uh, Monday, August 5th, 2019. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, over the weekend, please stay standing. Please remain standing. Over the weekend, we've had uh, uh, a couple of tragic shootings in our country, which is always hard for me to wrap my head around. Can we just observe a moment of silence for all the victims of, uh, of Dayton and El Paso? Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, roll call, Clerk Simpson. Uh, Trustee Volvo. Here. Trustee Lacantos. Present. Trustee Vito. Here. Trustee Lang. Here. Trustee Cooper. Present. Trustee Raffato. Here. President Holker. Here. You have before you the minutes of the regular meeting of July 1st, 2019. I need a motion for their approval. So moved. Motion. Second. second. Motion, Trustee Papantos. Second, to Trustee Rafato. Roll call, please. Trustee Bobo? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Rufata? Yes. President Harker? Yes. Are there any changes to the agenda? There are no, cheese, no changes this evening. Thank you. Brings us to citizens' concerns and comments. Just as a reminder, this is a time for citizens to make their comments and express concerns for, for the board to listen. Neither the board nor the staff is going to be answering questions or engaging in debate or commentary. Next. Um. Members of the public may address the, the board with comments regarding only those items that are relevant to village visit. No citizen shall speak for more than five minutes without consent of the board. Members of the general public who wish to address the board must sign the request to speak for them prior to the commencement of the public meeting. Mr. Him, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Him, Balea? Humble. Humble, I'm sorry. Hello, board members. I'd like to speak to you today about the village ordinance about parking over the sidewalk. I don't want to ban it. That's not reasonable. But I'd like to see the hours change. Currently, it's 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., which is pretty unreasonable to have to have somebody stay up that late before they can bring their car onto the driveway. I would propose we change that to 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. weekdays and 7 p.m. to 9 a.m. weekends and holidays. This would still get the cars off the streets during the week for kids going to school and let you sleep in a little bit longer on the weekends. 
I would appreciate, and then I speak for myself as well as many of my neighbors in the Ridgefield subdivision who have the problem of four cars in a driveway or three cars in a driveway. I really appreciate if you guys would take this under advisement and the next board meeting to vote to change these hours. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Graham? Ms. Graham? Hi. Good evening. Um, I'm here to uh, let you all know about a project that the League of Women Voters uh, of Arlington Heights, Mount Prospect, Buffalo Grove, Elk Grove Village, Wheeling, and uh, uh, there's one more, Prospect Heights, did I already say it? Anyway, that we have been doing for all of the students in our area. My name is Heidi Graham and I am president of said league. Um, we do a youth engagement program uh, for all of the high school students in District 214 as well as St. Viator High School. And this idea came about because we uh, learned, well, we've always known that our voter turnout uh, hit a 20-year low in the 2016 election with only 55% of eligible voters casting a vote and only 39% actually followed through on a vote in the 2016 election. It is the goal of the League of Women Voters to encourage active participation in our community. Educating eligible voters about how to register to vote is a major objective of our league. Moreover, an informed and engaged electorate will elect leaders who can develop, implement programs and policies to address community priorities. And voting is that essential first step. It's got most of you where you are today, right? Um, almost, I think, everybody up here except one is an elected official. And we thank you for your service. Um, we do understand that you are serving the community mostly as a volunteer. In the 2018-2019 school year, our league delivered 3,500 of these envelopes. Um, inside this envelope is a letter that directs students with how they register to vote and then how they subsequently vote. We also give them a magnet that they, we hope they will take away with them to remind them to vote because many of them will go away to school. Um, it has a pen stylus that says the vote is mightier than the pen. It has a sticker in it that says uh, vote, um, lots of reminders to vote. And then finally, we give them all candy because we know how to get at them. Um, each one of these, uh, so the follow-up survey for our first year and showed these results. Nearly 80% actually received the envelope. We do not handpick who gets them. We try to get them to each and every student in the district and St. Viator. Of those, uh, that 210 cited that the birthday envelope was the main reason they registered to vote. Over 1,200 students cited the birthday envelope, making it more likely that they would register to vote. And the remaining students cited that they would have registered regardless of receiving the envelope. So if we break this down by village, in Wheeling alone, we delivered envelopes to 1,631 students. So that's 1,631 families. The cost of this program to our league, a 100% volunteer organization, is about a dollar per student. I have uh, previously tried to get support from Wheeling. As you can see on the back of our envelope, we have ads from uh, other villages and the JCs. I'm hoping that we uh, can, add, I'm not asking for a donation. I'm asking for a $500 advertisement to put the Wheeling logo on the back of this envelope that will go to each and every student. Um, again, many of them who live in Wheeling. Um, so I'm asking for your help with that and your support. And again, we appreciate your service to the community. Thank you, have a great night. And if you'd like, I have pins. If anybody would like a vote pin, I'd love to come give you one. Yes? Uh, yeah, okay. Ms. Wilson? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Rosen first. Oh, thank you. Mr. Rosen? Oh, preaching to the choir. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks honey. Thank you. John, I'll leave one of these for you. Great, thank you. 
Good evening, and uh, thank you for letting me talk for this moment. I'm um, here um, as a citizen, not as anybody that's an elected official. It has nothing to do with the park board or my elected official. This is as a citizen and as a Rotarian to inform you that a week from this Friday, the 16th at noon, over at Chamber Park in front of the historical building, we're going to, uh, the Wheeling Rotary brought a bench to dedicate in a dedication to Judy Apriscato. So I just want everybody to know that there's going to be a picnic there, and anybody that really cares uh, for Judy, we're going to be doing a little uh, dedica dedication for her. I know Valerie will be there. Uh, as you know, she served our village for over 35 years in many respects. You guys know probably better than I do what she's done on, from your end, as well as being uh, one of our Rotary presidents for many years. Also, at that dedication, we also bought a bench for a gentleman named Jack Blaine. And if you don't know who Jack Blaine is, he was with our Rotary. He passed away, and he was with our Rotary for 55 years. From 35 years ago until pr till he died, he was a primary force for eradicating polio on a worldwide basis. He worked with Bill Gates, and just an unbelievable man, gave a lot of his money to that to that to cause. Today, we only have one or two countries left that have polio. When they started, we were about 50 different countries. So I wish that anybody that wishes to come, again, it's going to be on the 16th, Friday, starting at uh, 12 o'clock noon, and be in front of the uh, Historical Society. I wish you all good evening. The muse oh, Mr. Rosen, it's the museum, not the church. Yeah, the, the museum, exactly. The exactly. Historical yeah, Society this Museum. Thank you. The closest building to Wolf Road. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, Ms. Wilson. Hi, I'm here to talk to you about something I brought up before. Um, when our employees travel on, on business, uh, historically I used to see uh, charges on the credit card for cabs. Um, uh, most cab companies, uh, bond, their employees are bonded. Um, fingerprints and all that. Uh, I noticed the last couple of years, as I brought up to you before, we've ch shifted Mr. Lanfee, particularly Economic uh, Development Department, uh, has shifted from using the cabs to Uber or, you know, these cart, I don't know, I don't like that. Anybody getting in the car with a stranger, he's on our time. And if something happens, uh, that's a workman's comp claim. Okay, so any attorney and, and business person knows what workman's comp is costing employers in the state of Illinois. So as a victim of a violent crime myself, I, I personally care about uh, the little whisper of a woman, Miss Marianthe. She can't weigh 110 pounds soaking wet getting in some Uber uh, when she's traveling on business, okay? So it, it can happen to a man too. I just, I don't want, you have budget issues, I don't want uh, employees to feel, you know, feel like they have to compromise their safety by getting into a vehicle for some complete stranger uh, with these companies that they're not bonded, they're not fingerprinted. Uh, I think it's penny wise and pound foolish. I think for a few extra bucks, I don't want any kind of policy that is, is feel, you know, making them feel pressured like they have to save the village a few bucks to take an Uber instead of an actually uh, a cab company where, that has fingerprinted employees. So uh, I, I really urge you to uh, impress upon Mr. Spondilis uh, that no more, I, I want to actually, no more Ubers. I, I think it's dangerous you watch the 10 o'clock news and stuff is happening all the time and the, the hit to our workman's comp, you know, our rates would go up. So I, I encourage you to uh, pursue that. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. <clears throat> Staff reports, uh, Mr. Jennings. Thank you, President Horker. Uh, just a quick introduction of Marcy Nyes. She's our new village planner. Uh, she comes to us uh, from a consulting firm where she was acting as the planner for several communities in Lake County. Uh, Plan Commission has had the opportunity to meet her uh, and this is the first time she's been able to come to a board meeting. So I just wanted to introduce Marcy uh, so you could put the face with the name. Uh, we're very happy to have her here uh, working with the Plan Commission and the development community. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Thanks. Andrew. Uh, Deputy Chief Stephan. Thank you, President Horker. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, your police department is uh, participating in the National Night Out celebration tomorrow night from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, it's being hosted by the Park District at Heritage Park, and there's a lot of neat events there. We're going to have a dog demonstration. Uh, we're going to have some food. The pool is going to be opened up to the, for the kids, so uh, please uh, bring your families out. 
And uh, one other item here, really quick, uh, assessors from the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies have arrived and will be on site through Thursday to examine all aspects of the Wheeling Police Department's policy and procedures. <coughs> As a part of the uh, assessment, agency employees and members of the community are invited to offer comments at a public information hearing on Wednesday, August 7th at 5 p.m. The hearing will be conducted in the council chambers on the second floor of Village Hall here and uh, you're invited to uh, come and comment on your police department. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Clerk Simpson, I believe that brings us to the consent agenda. Consent agenda, all items listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so requests, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered after all other agenda items. 11A, resolution waiving the fidelity and surety bond requirements for a Del Rota Villa to conduct a raffle and amusement event. 11B, resolution granting a tag day permit for, to the Wheeling Firefighters Association to conduct a tag day event on September 13, 2019. 11C, ordinance amending sections of Title 13, Water and Sewers, and Title 17, Planning Subdivisions and Developments. 11D, resolution authorizing the acceptance of a previously submitted contract for the purchase of Dell Data Center equipment and services related to a network storage system upgrade in the amount of $59,233. And 79 cents. Um, 11E resolution authorizing the adoption of revisions to the personnel policy manual for the village of Wheeling. 11F resolution authorizing change order number two and fine to reduce the construction contract with Boulder Construction Company in the amount of $48,111.80 for South Wheeling Road Storm Sur improvements. 11G resolution authorizing change order number one and fine. Final to reduce the construction contract with MIS Incorporated for the Northgate Parkway sidewalk improvements and Wolf Road Bridge repair from $259,602.64 to $233,862.05. Item 11H, resolution approving a contract with RJN Group Incorporated for sanitary sewer evaluation services in the amount of $74,960. 11I, resolution authorizing an agreement with the Illinois American Water Company in order to construct a water main interconnection facility within the village of Wheeling. 11J, ordinance amending ordinance 4108, which ordinance granted site plan approval in conjunction with the condominium conversion of the Pine Hill Apartments 400-500 Manda Lane. If there are no Questions or comments? I would need a motion to approve. So moved. Motion, Trustee Papantos, second. Second. Trustee Rufato, roll call, please. Um, it was Lane, right? Or Rufato? Rufato. Rufato. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Rufato? Yes. President Horker? Yes. New business. Item 13A. 13A, ordinance granting a variation from Title 19 zoning to permit a six foot tall opaque fence within the front yard setback area 242 West Norman Lane, docket number 2019 14. Mr. Jennings, what do we have? Thank you, President Horker. The petitioner is the owner of a residential property at 242 West Norman. Uh, it's a corner lot. Uh, by the requirements of the zoning code, uh, the fence must respect the uh, front yard setback of two streets. Uh, petitioner is seeking to develop more of a backyard feel uh, in, the, in one of the two yards. Uh, not entirely uncommon. We do get requests for this uh, from time to time, uh, but due to the restriction of the zoning code, uh, the petitioner would not be allowed to do this without a variation. Uh, they requested the variation. The only issue that staff noted in the review uh, was that the neighbor's driveway uh, might have a vision obstruction if the fence is constructed to a six-foot height all the way uh, up to the, uh, to the property line. So there's a condition of approval uh, that was also repeated in the plan commission recommendation, which is prior to the issuance of the fence permit, 
the fence must demonstrate compliance with the division clearance requirements of section 1911030 of the zoning code. Uh, the Planning Commission, as I said, recommended approval with that condition. I believe the petitioner is here if you have any additional questions. Just for my own peace of mind, exactly what would be demonstrating compliance with the code? Uh, there would be a couple different ways to do it. They could drop the height of the few panels of the fence uh, at that location. They could chamfer the edge of it so that it would be angled and open up the vision. So it would be up to them uh, at the time of permit, and we would review that with them. They understand the options? Yes. Thank you. Any questions or comments from them? Trustee Papantos? Just one question for the petitioner. Sir, can you come to the mic? Sorry. And it does have to do with the, the vision for the driveway. You, you do understand that? Yes, I do. Somebody pulling out of their driveway has to be able to yes. see that sidewalk, and you'll comply whatever way? <laughs> yes, we have this conversation on the previous meeting. Uh, everything is clear, so whatever needs to be done. To make it safe, uh, I will work with that on the permit. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. Trustee Lang, you had a comment? Thank you. Well, my question is to uh, Mr. Jennings. We, you said we've had these requests before and we've honored or we've um, uh, had variances on these requests before. So is this um, anything out of the ordinary? No, there's nothing particularly unusual about it. Most of the petitioners who have, uh, most of the residential owners who've come to us have dropped the request. So we've actually seen more at the staff level than you've seen uh, at the board level. But it is something that we get a couple of times a year and then maybe one or two uh, variations in the last few years. Uh, but not nothing terribly unusual about it. And other than what you, you stated in your report, you don't have any issues with the I know if we drop down the, the sight line for the neighbor, that's probably the biggest concern. No, no additional comments, no. Okay. Thank you. If there are no other comments, I'd be looking for a motion to approve. So moved. Motion, Trustee Vogel. Second. Second, Trustee Papantos. Roll call, please. Um, Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Papantos. Yes. Trustee Vito. Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Cougar? Yes. Trustee Raffato? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, 13B, ordinance granting special use approval for a sit-down restaurant, 48 West Dundee Road, Gorditas, La Milpa, docket number 2019-15. Mr. Jennings, what do we got? Thank you. Uh, the petitioner is seeking special use approval for a sit-down restaurant. Uh, the previous restaurant at this location uh, was carry-out. Uh, it was actually a bakery. Uh, the, uh, the addition of the seating does require special use approval. Um, the issue that came up during the plan commission uh, review was that the parking uh, available at this center would, would limit this particular establishment to a total of 18 seats uh, due to the number of employees. Um, they, uh, the plan commission discussed that there's a condition of approval from the plan commission recommendation, uh, reducing the number of seats from their original petition, uh, to a number that would not require a parking variation. Uh, beside that, the plan commission had no particular concerns. I believe the petitioner is here. Uh, the condition of approval, uh, just for the record is that the total number of seating shall not exceed 18 seats. Thank you, Mr. Jennings. Trustee Papantos, you had something? Yes, the petitioner. Thank you. So how long from approval before you can open do you expect any major renova renovations to be occurring inside? Because going from a bakery to, I don't know if you need a grease trap or if there's one there. Or... Um, that is a requirement um, for the location. Um, however, nothing has been... Um, started or uh, the permits are not initiated yet or they're initiated but they're not received yet so uh, as, as far as after the uh, permits are received then the construction will begin it would be about a month and a half about a month and a half yes. in order once to get turn it approval. around to make it into a sit-down restaurant and um, do all the necessary uh, remodel and grease trap and everything that's required on the drawings and do you expect most of your business to be um, inside or take out um a combination of both uh we do like want the option to have the sit in restaurant um 
so that will give you know the the guests to come in and enjoy the experience but we are also going to be encouraging to go orders make it easier for for the customers to come in and, and get to go orders so it's a combination of both yeah thank you mm -hmm. if there are no other questions i'd be looking for a motion to approve so moved I'll second. Second. motion trustee Rafato. second trustee lang roll call please Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Cooter? Yes. Kruger? <coughs> Trustee Rafato? Yes. President Horker? Yes. It's been, it's been approved. Oh, I'm, oh I, I, <laughs> that's okay. Thank you, that's okay. It's been approved. Welcome. Okay, Welcome. Should I read C and D together? Yes, please. Okay, 13C, ordinance granting special use site plan approval to permit a gas station and convenience store at 1048 South Milwaukee Avenue, Hutton, docket number 2019-17A. 13D, ordinance granting special use approval to permit a sit-down restaurant with drive through at 1048 South Milwaukee Avenue, Hutton, mm -hmm. docket number 2019-17B. Uh, the petitioner might as well come on up and introduce yourself. Do we have any questions from the board? Or no? Right. Questions, comment? Trustee Lang, come on. Yes, um, I am totally in favor of this, For sure. with the exception of the billboard. And this is our only opportunity, really, to to work on removing that. It is, billboards are so unsightly, especially in a, I could see on an interstate, but in a community, they just don't work. And um, so I, I would love the, to be able to, at this point, remove it or from the, from the plans and have it removed. Um, but that's me. So I just wanted to state that. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Trustee Lang. Um, Trustee Papantos. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the plan. I, I have to say, I think this is the first time I have seen a project that absolutely fits into the comprehensive plan without a doubt. I, it, it's like that's what was supposed to be there, and I don't think anybody had that kind of vision. It's, it, is, it amazes me. Um, it's actually pretty exciting. I just want to clarify a few things that I was a little confused during the plan commission. Entrance and exit only off of Sumac, correct? That's correct. Okay, so there's no curb cuts on um, from Milwaukee Avenue? No, ma'am. Okay, so that's um, out there. And is Sumac going to have a right-hand turn lane and a left-hand turn lane for people exiting? Yes, there's a, a dedicated left and a dedicated right on the exit on Sumac. Okay. And... Will there be a left-hand turn lane on Milwaukee for... Yes, ma'am, into Sumac. In, okay, there will be. Okay, because there's not one now, but you're going to actually put that Correct. in? Th those plans are still under review by the DOT, but we do expect that they will ask for that turn lane. And you don't mind putting that in? Yeah, they will, they will require it. Uh, it'll be based on their requirements because they hold the permit. Right. Yeah. And they won't give you a permit unless Correct. you do what they want. Correct. I, I, I they don't the play nice. Study recommended one, right? <laughs> okay. Um, tell me about the sidewalk. <laughs> so, so the sidewalk on Sumac, we've we've questioned all along whether that's needed or not. Sumac is a private road; it's not a public village-owned street. So we've questioned uh, why the need for a sidewalk along a public or a private roadway, as well as the properties to the west or. Um, a welding supply company, uh, garbage uh, waste management company, environmental waste cleanup company, and uh, airplane hangars. And we just don't see the need for a sidewalk leading to those properties. And again, it's, it would be on a private road. And you know, the ask is also that we dedicate an easement dedicating that sidewalk for public use. But you know, the issue we have is if you're asking us to provide a sidewalk and allow the public to use it, and I believe you guys are also asking us for, for us to maintain it and carry the liability on it, but it's uh, really a public use sidewalk through private property. That's our issue. 
as well as it's a cost that we just don't feel is necessary. Right. I mean, and we do ask everybody for sidewalks because if eventually you don't put them in, they will never be there. Um, and, and that is the problem. As far as the billboard goes, um, and I happen to live on this side of town, on, on your side of town, there are eight billboards between in, in a mile radius, and I don't think anybody sitting up here actually realized that. I don't particularly... I don't like the billboard, but to tell you the truth, um, I don't mind as long as you maintain it, clean it up, the, the post, so it doesn't look like peeling paint. Yeah. Um, and we have talked with the, the billboard leasing company, and they have said that they would maintain, they would go in and repaint and clean up that billboard. And I think you know that, that in itself would be a lot better than saying, remove it, because I'm afraid we're going to be opening a can of worms down the line. Um, that we really don't want to open, you know, and yes. um, apparently there's a lot of legal issues on it, so I don't want to get into that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. Trustee Rufato? Thank you. The, I was going to ask about the sidewalk, and I'm a firm believer of sidewalks because they, and, you're, you, and you have a restaurant, and folks could walk from the western properties to come to your sidewalk. And it should be on your side. I know there was some discussion in the Planning Commission about it being on the other side. Uh, I would prefer to be, and I'm a firm believer in that, that it should be there and it should be on, on the side of the gas station. Um, and also as far as um, the billboard, I'm, I'm not adverse to opening up a can of worms. I, I think they should, I, I think we should make an effort to remove them. And if, and if there are eight, it's, it's, it's a start as far as I'm concerned, and, and we should work on doing that. Also, um, and I think you mentioned it, uh, one, of the, one of the questions is you indicated in the, in the Planning Commission meeting that the traffic study is still under review and you're hoping mid-August is still, is that still a target? Yeah. Yeah, it is. We have our civil engineer here. He's tracking that, so I'm just checking with him. Okay. All right, great. Um, and thank you for replacing the, uh, the porcelain with brick. It, it makes it, it enhances it, and, uh, and I like, I like the, the restaurant. And uh, I like the building. And what is the restaurant going to be? It's a coffee user, actually. Um, it'll, it'll be similar to a Starbucks concept, not quite as much food. It'll be mostly coffee. Okay, great. That's all I had. Thank you, Trustee Rufato. Um, any other comments or questions? None. Uh, I would like to consider these one, uh, one at a time. So ordinance C, granting special use site plan approval to permit a gas station and convenience store at 1048 South Milwaukee Avenue, Hutton, docket number 2019-17A. So I need a motion for that approval. So moved. Trustee Kruger. Second. Trustee Rufato. I'm sorry, sir, what was your name again? Uh, sorry, Ben Carroll with Hutton. Thank you for the sure. minutes. Roll call, please. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Papantos. Yes. Trustee Vito. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Rufato. Yes. President Horker. Yes. And then we have Ordinance D, granting special use and site plan approval to permit a sit-down restaurant with a drive-through at the same address. Need a motion for the approval. So, so moved. Second. Motion to Trustee Rufato, second to Trustee Papas, Papantos. I'm sorry. Roll call, please. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Rufato? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to Wheeling. <laughs> e? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 13E, ordinance granting a various variation from Title 19 zoning to reduce the side yard setback for detached garage at 415 Walnut Avenue, docket number 2019-19. Mr. Jennings, can you explain it, please? Thank you. Uh, we don't have very many residential variations, so to have two in one night is somewhat unique. Uh, as you can see in this photograph, the, uh, the driveways for these two properties 
uh, are joined in the middle. Uh, the property on the left is the subject property. They're requesting to replace uh, their drive, uh, their uh, garage uh, closer to the property line to make it easier to get in and out of the garage. Uh, the Planning Commission reviewed this and did not uh, object to them uh, moving their uh, their garage over. Uh, required setback six feet for detached accessory structure. Uh, and they're requesting a three foot setback. Uh, as you can see from the photograph, it would be a garage to garage separation uh, in this case. Uh, the petitioner, I believe, is here uh, and, and available to answer any questions. There were no conditions of approval in the Planning Commission recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Jennings. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Right. There are none. Need a motion for the approval? So moved. Second. Motion, Trustee Vogel. Second, Trustee Papantos. Roll call, please. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Rafato? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Uh, 11F. F and G together, please. F and G together? Okay, 11F. I mean, I'm sorry, 13F, resolution awarding a contract to Hoare Construction for the Dundee Road Sanity Sewer Rehabilitation Report Project in the amount of $996,984. G, 13G is resolution accepting a proposal from RJN Group for construction engineering services involving the Dundee Road Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation to the amount of 89800 Thank you, Clerk Simpson. Mr. Janik, you're up. What Thank you. Um, as part of our ongoing review of our infrastructure, this is a, a contract for rehabilitation of, our, of a sanitary sewer, uh, numerous sanitary sewer pipes extending from Elmhurst Road uh, east all the way to where the Buffalo Creek um, crosses Dundee Road just east of here. Uh, this is a, a liner that uh, th this company, Hoare Construction, will be installing into the sewer pipe. There's uh, different sizes and lengths of sewer. It's approximately 8,000 linear feet. And uh, the, the second contract is a uh, engineering services contract for a, um, for a review engineer to follow this, this construction. This, is, uh, this construction is more complicated than our personnel can review. Thus, we, we need an inspection engineer to follow this job. Thank you, Mr. Janik. Uh, Trustee Kruger, you had a question? Uh, yeah, a couple quick ones. Uh, Director Janik, um, how long will the project take to do? Uh, I believe it's going to take uh, two months. Will it be started before they start work on Lake Cook Road? Yes. Well, uh, when, you, when you say start before work, they're doing some um, preliminary um, uh, preliminary work underground on Lake Cook Road, some of the utility work, but they're not going to be doing any um, road work construction until next year. Okay, I'm just concerned about lane closures, which was my last question. <coughs> oh, gotcha. Do we anticipate lane closures? If, if there are lane closures, the, the, all the sanitary sewers on the, um, well, 95% of it's on the north side of the roadway. It's in the parkway, so it's not in the roadway. We're not replacing any pipe, at least not this time. It's all lining. So if there is any lane closure, it's going to be in short sections on a temporary basis. Uh, there could be some situations where there's going to be um, barricades uh, along the edge of the roadway near the curb because they might be close to the edge of the curb. But generally speaking, this is not going to close down lanes for any length of time. Great. That's all I had. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Trustee Kruger. Trustee Papantos? Thank you. Will there be any problems with the roadway along um, Lynn Plaza and Stasic if it's there's not a lot of parkway at that point and so are we going to be disrupting business? No, there shouldn't be any disruption of business uh, relative to the closure of driveways and that sort of thing. No, because we're not going to be digging up um, any areas for the pipe. There, there will be some bypass, um, uh, by, bypass bypassing of the sanitary sewer that's going to complicate things a little bit. Um, that is, as they um, line the pipe, they have to stop this, the, the flow, divert it, and then go, go around. But that shouldn't, uh, again, that shouldn't stop any traffic or have any delays in traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. If there are no other questions or comments, I would like a motion on Resolution F. So moved. Motion. Second. Trustee Kruger, second Trustee Papantos. Roll call, please. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee 
Papantos? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Rafato? Yes. President Horker? Yes, and then we need a motion on uh, letter G, the engineering services for the same project. So moved. moved. Second. Give the motion to Trustee Vogel and second to Trustee Kruger. Roll call, please. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Rafato? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Uh, item H. Item H, uh, 13H, discussion regarding constant review of the le 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 colonial townhomes. Mr. Spondilis, this is a concept review, not a, not a PUD concept. What's the difference? Uh, thank you. Uh, that is correct. And the way we approach these um, is uh, that I read uh, a consistent paragraph into the record so that everyone is aware of exactly what a concept review is, uh, then turn it over to Community Development Director Jennings uh, for his introduction of the project specific. Uh, following that, the petitioner has an opportunity to uh, give their presentation on the project. Uh, it will then return to Community Development Director Jennings for um, any comments, and then we can entertain uh, questions, comments from the board, uh, and, and interact a little with the petitioner. So the current request is for a non-binding approval of the proposed non-PUD concept. The feedback by the board will be used by the development team as a guide in the preparation of the formal development plan. The outcome of this evening shall not constitute a formal approval or denial of the application. The decision by the board tonight is non-binding and shall not prevent the applicant from moving forward with a formal application. Mr. Jennings. Thank you. Uh, as Manager Spondulis just said, this is a non-binding review. Um, we have had a, uh, a concept review somewhat recently for a, uh, a development that was not a PUD. Uh, so we've recently discussed the distinction between the PUD concept review and a concept review for site plan. Um, and again, that it, it is uh, that the land use in this case is considered to be permitted land use. The question uh, is more to the configuration of the development and not whether or not a residential use here is permitted. Um, the development team uh, is here and will present uh, the concept for the plan. Uh, the uh, staff will then follow with uh, some of the staff review comments. So with that, I'd like to introduce the, the development team to, to come forward and uh, explain the proposal uh, and make your presentation to the board. And just as, the, as they come up, the, the development team is a contract purchaser of the property. Uh, they have uh, been working through the site plan with the staff, uh, and, and I, I assume there's a uh, zoning contingency in that contract. Uh, part of the, uh, the process here would be, should this go forward, they would be, uh, they would be requesting what they need of the, of the seller uh, in terms of timeline. Thank you, Mr. Jennings. Uh, please introduce yourself. Good evening. Um, can you hear me? Um, my name is Irina Makarchuk, and I'm attorney for the petitioner, Le Colonial Townhomes LLC. Uh, we are here tonight seeking concept approval from the village to bring a beautiful new development to the Childerly Park and the surrounding area. We propose to make a presentation and after um, answer all questions that you might have, um, either in group or individually. Uh, the parcel in question has uh, languished for years and due to its topography is not even being used by the neighborhood kids. The developer proposes uh, to construct for sale townhomes, rich in living amenities and um, near the Wheelings Town Center and all it has to offer. The original petition submitted and reviewed by staff was for a total of 12 townhomes. However, in the meeting with Andrew and Steve, they mentioned that the village was, ongoing, uh, was going to be in possession of several, un of several unbuildable lots immediately adjacent to the um, site. And the team found that the highest and best use would be uh, to add several additional units, thereby significantly increasing the property tax to the village 
literally creating value and revenue where there was none before for many, many decades to come. We, as proud Wheeling business residents, have confidence in our town and are willing to invest locally to bring jobs and much needed property tax revenue to our town. Um, this brings me to the project itself. Tonight we have with us Boris Trudievsky, um, representing the development team, which consists of our investment company, Network Capital Services, and Enabled Path, which is a women-owned, minority-certified company, construction company, um, both long-term wheeling residents, a uh, business residents. I would like also to mention that I am um, a shareholder for Enabled Path and have been personally involved in our past projects. Um, the next members of our uh, team are Hernando Moreno, which, who is architect, and Harry Kreiser, engineer. Um, Boris will continue. Good evening, my name is Boris Stradievsky and I represent the uh, uh, developer. Uh, we're basically here to discuss the, the project itself and some of the changes that uh, we were uh, able to um, uh, bring to the project. As Irina mentioned, it was originally started as a, actually as a 15 unit project with um, Bill Hyde, who everyone knows unfortunately is no longer able to assist us with it. And so in the process, the team realized that it was uh, running short of um, detention and a decision was made to try and bring the project into the village with uh, 12 units only, which uh, you know fit on the parcel very, very nicely. And so we went on to create a 12-unit plan, uh, and then, um, you know, somewhat in, in the conversations with uh, Andrew and uh, uh, Steve, we realized that the village is going to take possession of the parcel adjacent, directly adjacent to uh, the site. And so we thought to ourselves, why not bring back the 15-unit plan, because it does bring more, um, you know, re revenue to the village, obviously makes it more economically feasible for the developer, and can easily fit on the sites, especially in the fact that it does not require any uh, detention at that point. Um, some of the issues that were brought forth is obviously the topography of the site. It's uh, unusual, to say the least. Um, you know, it's an unusual shape parcel and unusual topography. It has uh, various degrees of, of uh, you know, um, of height uh, through the site, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, we obviously had a number of challenges that, that we had to uh, uh, meet in order to um, make this all work, um, which we think we did. Uh, on the other hand, some of the things that happened to us uh, in the process, uh, Andrew was nice enough to send me some of the questions or some of the um, items that uh, the, the staff felt we needed to uh, change in order to bring the project to the board. Uh, unfortunately, in, you know, in, in, um, in the translation, I, I resent that to the team and they did not get the attachment. So the changes that they proposed um, last week were not uh, reflected in, uh, necessarily reflected in the uh, light of the uh, original letter that Andrew sent us. So we uh, got the link from Steve on Friday late in the afternoon and worked very hard on trying to uh, uh, make the changes that are necessary in order to uh, secure uh, more of a favorable uh, uh, view by staff for the project. Um, we basically plan tonight um, to, base, you know, to, to say to, to the village that, you know, in adding these three townhomes uh, to the project, we're actually uh, bringing value and uh, um, much revenue, a lot of revenue to the, to the town for many, many years to come for a site that would otherwise be unused, um, never get on the tax roll for the village, never produce any money for the village other than cost. And so by simply adding these three townhomes, you know, if you take an average of uh, roughly $12,000 a year in, in property taxes per each and you time that by useful life of 50 years, each townhome brings $600,000 towards life to the tax roll of the village, you know, and, and that's for a site that's never going to make any money for the village. It's just a vacant piece of land that is never going to be usable for you guys because it's in the floodway, in a floodplain, floodway, the whole thing. So um, we basically uh, plan to show tonight that, that the, uh, um, the questions that were raised by staff, we were able or actually met some of them prior to the changes. Uh, we basically plan to show that the materials that, um, that are required or material proposed are within the village requirements that the, actually even the stucco that we were proposing was not a synthetic stucco, it was a, a quality product that would have been way more expensive than the proposed siting that, uh, that is required. But we are planning to, to show that in our updated proposal we made the changes that uh, were requested by staff to um, uh, go to the old brick 
to a, a, up to a certain point and then uh, accent it with uh, um, uh, approved products. Uh, the other thing that, that was obviously a, a very uh, uh, um, big point of uh, um, contention with, uh, with staff was the visibility um, and uh, um, traffic movement. So what we did is we um, came in and we removed the walls that were separating each of the carports and uh, instead installed uh, columns which provided for a, a clear view from all directions. So when the car actually pulls out of the driveway, it's, it's got seven feet of storage, of parking, and then another 10 feet or so to go backwards. So it sees, you know, you could see all the oncoming traffic from both directions if there was any traffic at all. Uh, the other thing that uh, was uh, uh, basically uh, pointed out by staff is that we didn't have uh, pedestrian walkways. We, we added those. Uh, we made those uh, available throughout the, the entire complex from both directions, uh, front and back. Um, and we updated the configuration by moving the building ever so slightly. Uh, to be able to uh, um, accommodate clearer path for traffic. So the other thing is uh, uh, the cul-de-sac itself, uh, there was a question of uh, whether this uh, would not impose on folks turning around uh, in the cul-de-sac. So we proposed a soft curb, something that would basically, you know, uh, alert you of the fact that you're outside of the boundary itself. Uh, something that, that is practiced in, in many different, uh, you know, many different places. Um, and then, uh, um, you know, uh, the difficulties of the project, um, and Andrew pointed out that we may have to have a detention, I mean, uh, 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 walls in between uh, each, each one of these units. We actually reconfigured the roof lines to reflect, uh, you know, uh, a different direction, and uh, we feel that uh, the product we brought is in line of what, you know, of anything that, that was ever produced in town for this town, and in quality, way higher product. Uh, it has a beautiful location. Uh, next to the park. Uh, we'd love to have the park as an amenity for the project. And um, we actually proposed a, a walkway for the neighborhood and, and um, Andrew suggested that we do not present that unless we have a, an agreement with uh, a park district. So we took that out. And that's all I got. With that, I'd like to introduce Fernando who designed the project and maybe he'll be able to add a little bit more for uh, free. Okay, just to... Uh Expand a little bit further on uh, some Could you of the, please state your name, please? Uh, Hernando Moreno. Thank you. Just to uh, expand a little bit further um, on the comments we received on Friday afternoon, um, one of the comments that Andrew made was that the the, the project looked too much like uh, was predominantly a motor court approach. Um, as you entered into it, uh, many of many of the developments that use uh, townhouse developments typically will have a motor court, and there will be extensive amount of asphalt. And in this scheme, in order to uh, try to present a nicer motor court, uh, the civil engineer suggested that we uh, use uh, the, the area between the sidewalk, which we've now installed and the uh, garage to be a uh, grass uh, surface, a hardscape surface that, that will be green, that needs to be mowed, uh, needs to be maintained, and you can also drive on it. So it will create a much nicer, greener environment. In between all the units is a three foot six by seven foot uh, landscape area that our landscape architect will put a uh, bushes uh, and ground cover so that it does not become a sea of asphalt. Uh, and this is one of the improvements that uh, we feel makes the project very strong. Uh, also, as, as you come Colonial Drive, really the, the view as, as you turn up on the units uh, to the east, it, it's a very attractive uh, facade. The front door is there. The, um, the balconies are there, the extensive windows. It, it, it's not an ugly building. I don't know if you could flip to the elevations. Uh, I believe it. Okay. Uh, so right there. Uh, so that's actually what you're going to see as you come along north of the drive. It's, it, it's not motor court. It's a nice, uh, a nice elevation. Uh, we're using the uh, synthetic stucco. And that's really not a, uh, what everyone is afraid of is uh, drive it. This is not a drive it product. This is actually real stucco. 
we actually are going to be stapling a wire mesh and uh, then uh, th three coats, uh, base coat of uh, concrete uh, mix and then uh, interme intermediate mix and then the final coat which will be synthetic which allows for uh, it's a much nicer product in that it, uh, it will not crack, you won't see any cracks on it uh, it lasts forever and it's not cheap. This is a uh, this costs as much as the brick to do. Originally we were planning on using that for the uh, second tier and Andrew said that that was a little too uh, too much use of stucco. Apparently there's a regulation where you can't use uh, synthetic stucco uh, for for that. So we're just using it as a detail over the doors. Um, so we feel that this is very attractive. Uh, the flat roof, which we had uh, attempted going without a variation, instead of the, uh, so we had to chop it to 35 feet. Here we're going to ask for a little variation of about four foot six to get to the peak of the 512 roof. It will become an attractive asphalt roof uh, instead of a flat roof. Uh, so we feel this is a very nice, uh, nice product. Um, let's see if I can. When you look uh, in the motor court, uh, you can see that the uh, landscape architect has provided the green space and we will have additional green space uh, where in this rendering we have the concrete uh, where, where the car is parked and in between we got rid of the bearing walls and now it's going to become all a precast hmm. column and uh, beam system that will hold up the second floor. Uh, and so as you back out, uh, you'll have no issues. Uh, looking in and also because we did add three feet uh, for a path so you're not fighting the cars uh, coming back there's a designated concrete walk it now adds an additional three feet so as you pull up in a 17 foot car you have uh, uh, an additional three feet now you're 10 feet out now you can pretty much you're out of the overhang when you back out so you have a much nicer clearer view so this is the feedback we got from Andrew, and this is how we address this situation. Um, let me see what other. The, uh, the main, the main uh, aesthetic driver of the scheme is to take advantage of the views to Childerly Park. So we faced all the windows, uh, you know, all, all the nice stuff faces the park. So typically a resident will pull in, yeah, come in in many of these units because uh, it's, it's just a dr uh, it's just a garage. You will have a keypad to get in from the back, or uh, a, vi a visitor can park or park in the driveway and go around uh, if he goes through the front door or goes through the garage door, and he has a very nice experience. He sees the park. There is a sidewalk. Uh, in regards to the topography, we are just simply following the uh, the gentle slope of the grade. It's, there's about an eight inch per 22 foot slope of the gray uh, of the topography and the townhouses follow that grade gently there are no real retaining walls except at the end where we have small changes in order to make the driveways driveways work and there are some retaining walls in the front where there is a volume control and that we can get rid of those retaining walls if we can put volume into the uh, adjacent property so we'll have very little retaining walls all this whole thing is designed gently around the existing grade. There is no violent changes. There aren't any 10 foot retaining walls, five foot retaining walls. It's going to be a very nice project that just follows the existing topography. Um, one of the comments that was also mentioned was that uh, was this uh, handicapped accessible? Many of these townhomes are, uh, all these townhome developments are not handicapped accessible. The typical strategy for these townhomes is to provide the garage on the ground floor and typically the front door comes in at the half level. So we thought it'd be nice and again this is just following the existing topography to come up that half level uh, and you enter at the foyer level and you go half, half down to the garage or half up to the living, living space. These are not handicapped accessible, none of these, uh, all, all these developments. This is a very standard floor plan strategy. So, uh, but the guest will, uh, will require a handicap, so we did have, we do have one handicap accessible parking. There was a comment that we did not have uh, handicap accessible parking, so we 
uh, provided that. Um, I, I think that those cover it. Uh, we, we made sure that uh, the uh, sidewalks uh, have now, we've scooted the buildings a little bit, so we're gonna ask for a little variation to scoot the buildings closer to Chitterley Park so we can sneak the sidewalks in. So we have designated pathways for pedestrians to walk through without having to walk through the uh, car, car aisle, the 24-foot car aisle. Um, and I, I believe th this addresses most of the concerns, so I, I hope that uh, you know, we, we let us uh, keep developing this and take care of any other concerns that arise, uh, and we can just keep moving forward with the project. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jennings. Thank you. Uh, I, I think just as a reminder, the, the concept review is a non-binding review, and any feedback that you provide to the petitioner, they can use uh, if the project goes forward. Uh, a, a lot of these uh, changes have been made. The staff has not reviewed thoroughly yet, uh, and really not to the point of, I think, the big picture review uh, that we've prepared to discuss. It doesn't, they're not of major consequence uh, right now. It's okay to show them. We haven't reviewed them, but it is fine to show them. Uh, any comments that are made over, over the overall development, they can use. So if there are elements of this that, you, uh, that you'd that you like to see going forward, you can certainly make those types of comments. The, the focus of the staff review in this uh, is more of a, a, broader, a broader focus of what this development character uh, how, how the development character uh, has worked out over the over this uh, relatively small site. The, I think we're all in agreement that this site is challenging. Uh, it has a, a topography issue. It has a visibility and access issue. The site configuration itself, the physical shape of this site, is also uh, difficult to deal with. And I think the the big picture staff review and why you see the overall negative staff comment on this is that in order to develop. Uh, a sufficient number of townhome units to justify the cost of developing the site. What we believe you end up with, while it may not be a unit per acre variation, is a site plan uh, that isn't uh, of a, a high quality character. And now that's a little bit subjective. We are talking about uh, is, is the character of this development uh, something that you'd like to see built here, not uh, a black and white variation necessarily. Yes, there will be some variations to produce uh, to, to produce this, and those standards for variation would have to be reviewed at a later date. But at this point, what we're talking about is the the layout, the overall layout, and the overall appearance. So, just to to recap some of the things from the staff report, uh, we we did note uh, some deficiencies. The overall review, again, was that uh, we, we didn't feel that we could support it going forward. Uh, however, if the, if the board would like to see it move forward, we can absolutely work with the petitioner to incorporate comments. Um, first, the first area of concern we had was with the context. Uh, the townhomes have an unusual relationship uh, to the surroundings due in part to the location and the shape of the parcel. So this, this site is already constrained by the fact that it's at the end of this cul-de-sac bulb, uh, and any access to it does have to take that into account. Uh, the, the relationship to that cul-de-sac bulb has, is driving, in some cases, uh, in combination with the number of units, is driving the fact that they have to have access to the units, uh, and there's, it's double-loaded, so there's two sides that they have to serve. Uh, again, back to the motor court comment that staff had made and the, and the uh, petitioner was responding to. Um, again, addressing something like that, in my opinion, requires a reduction in the number of units that uh, would, would likely make this uh, an, an infeasible project, that they wouldn't be able to uh, justify the development if they reduced the number of units to address that comment. Uh, there was some discussion of the visual character and the building materials, again, fairly subjective. On the one hand, there were some versions of the plan earlier on that had prohibited materials on it, and so we've advised them of that. Uh, if the, if the uh, board is in favor of the overall development, uh, as it appears, uh, that, that information would be passed on to the plan commission. Um, uh, again, the access, uh, there's a modification to the cul-de-sac bulb. Um, in order to provide adequate access, the, the cul-de-sac bulb uh, would be broken up uh, by a fairly large curb cut. This is a, a tweak that they have been making in the iterations of the plan. So this version that you see does address that to some extent. But uh, again, if you look at the end of the cul-de-sac bulb, 
there is a, a very wide opening to, in order to provide uh, the adequate turning radius to get into all the, build, uh, all the units. Uh, the units at the south end in particular wouldn't have access any other way than by opening up the bowl. Uh, topography, um, the, a lot of the changes uh, that the petitioner has uh, discussed um, have, have occurred over uh, different versions of the plan. Um, I think we could argue what of, what of that is a choice and what of that is the topography. Uh, some, of, some of what has uh, occurred with the, uh, the, the plans we believe is a choice. Uh, we feel that some of the grading issues could have been dealt with a different way. And again, not to get into the, all the, uh, the nitty gritty of the plan. I think the, the staff review, the main point of the staff review is that as it stands, we felt like the, uh, the overall uh, ground density, if you will, created sort of a cluttered appearance as you enter the site. Um, again, addressing these things, in my opinion, would, would result in them losing a significant number of units. Um, and with that, I think there was one other note uh, that the petitioner brought up that I don't believe is actually in the memo. Uh, there is a question of the compensatory storage uh, being located off-site. Uh, the staff had no objection with that. We didn't see any issue with uh, those, those uh, parcels. The village uh, has been maintaining them for years. As you know, we just recently finished the uh, acquisition of those parcels through the county's no-cash bid program. So we do own, the, own all five of the parcels, three of which are on this side of the, the road here. Uh, we had no objection with those parcels being used. They don't likely have much of a use other than to support development. So to the extent that the... Uh, the, uh, this development would benefit from that. Staff had no objection to that, but it is something that staff can't decide. Uh, we do need the board to, uh, to decide that if this does move forward, that it would be okay to, to continue utilizing those parcels for uh, stormwater management. Uh, I believe that's, that covers everything. Uh, happy to answer any questions. I'm sure the petitioner would be able to answer questions as well. Um, Thank you, Mr. Jennings. Uh, Trustee Lang, you have a comment, and then Trustee Kruger. I do. Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate you guys uh, wanting to build something on a piece of property, add to our, our um, tax base. Uh, but um, with that, uh, what, what's the initial price point are you looking for for something like this? So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so we're looking at a starting price of about three hundred forty thousand. Uh, there'll be 2,100 square feet uh, to mimic the size of the units currently marketed by DR Horton. Okay. So, so here, here is my problem, and that's a, that's a great price point. That's something that you know is in line with the village. Um, what we've been putting in to this community, um, anyway. You have before you though the Colonial and the Colonial Group and. Uh, you know, it's uh, less than stellar. It's very old property, and it uh, isn't as well maintained as uh, cert certainly I would like it to be. Um, how would you get? How would you overcome that to get people to folks to want to buy back in in your location when they have to drive through something like that every day? Well, I think I would start by asking our police department to enforce no parking rules. That would be a beginning because uh, most of the street is cluttered by cars parked or double parked in no parking zone, uh, which obviously brings a negative view once you're driving into the area. So that would be, and I believe I mentioned that in the meeting with Andrew, I did ask for, you know, if we are to move forward to try and, and, and for, I, I do realize that some of those folks have more than one car and they need a place to park and I completely get it. But what happens there, and I have pictures in my phone and I'd be happy to bring them and show them individually to each one of the board members. You know, what happens that, you know, on, on that street, more day in the, you know in the afternoon so having said that um, I totally hope that this would spur um, you know pride of ownership I mean if anything it would create something that that you know most people would try to be in line with what's happening around them um, right now you have a, a blighted piece of land that, that just sits there you know and generates seven hundred dollars a year in, in property taxes and and it's been that way for a long long time and I think that we took that challenge on you know we tried to work with us the best we could. Uh, I think Hernando tried to explain. It is a very unusual parcel for our part of uh, the town here, you know, because it's got some pretty heavy, you know, uh, angles and, and corners and, 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 you know, it was difficult to work with. We tried to do, you know, the best we can without, you know, interrupting the neighborhood. We actually 
proposed to create, you know, a, a walkway for the neighborhood to try and stay within, you know, the spirit of the, you know, neighborly spirit of the area right there. Not just to, you know, implement no parking and, you know, throw everybody out of the way. But I'm hoping that when these people do see that something's happening, they'll, they'll believe that their property values are increasing and they'll do something about that, you know. Um, I, that's just my belief. I, I do think that we probably need to, to work as a community to solve more problems in that area first before we venture into something else. But but that's you know that's another story. The uh, I'm not really crazy about the design. Um, it's kind of something unlike I never you know haven't seen around in this area. Well, before. that was the idea, to be honest. With yeah, you. I mean it's really it's really different and uh, it's more modern. It, it sure is. Um, uh, Anyway, I am not 100% sold about moving forward on this right now, only because of some of the obstacles you have. And, and I'd be happy to, to try and change your mind. You know, if you tell me what it is that, that you feel so, you know, so strongly about, let me try and take a crack at it, you know. We develop Colonial, and I think we got it. I would love to buy all those townhomes. If you can help me acquire them, that would be my first move, you know. Let's work on it. Right, but I think also you have to consider the fact that the village owns a couple of parcels right there at the corner, and I think that uh, you know I'm sure eventually if this site is developed, the village would like to see the development continue and you know bring more revenue to the village by actually utilizing parcels that that you guys own and that are just sitting there and generating nothing for anyone. Right, and we do have salaries and policemen and firemen and you know everything that we need to pay for and mm -hmm. you know and so I, I'm just thinking that. Uh, obviously, we can't make those people do anything to their property, um, but I think that, that having seen the, the moves, the landscaping that we can bring on, you know, the beautification of the area, you know, hopefully that'll spur some people to do some things to their own property. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Trustee Lang. Trustee Kruger and then Trustee Rafato. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Stadievsky, thank Good you evening. for coming before us. Thank you. Um, I, I, Trustee Lang took my question about price points, so thank you for that, because there really wasn't that information in the packet. Right. Um, we didn't get that far. <laughs> yeah, and, and square footage either, so I didn't really know what we were talking about. It is on the floor plan, so we, we did upload originally a, a full packet that went to staff, and that included the layouts and actually, you know, all kinds of beautiful things in there, to be honest with you, uh, down to the fireplaces, you know. Yeah, I think I only saw the exterior um, yeah. uh, measurements. Right. There is, there is a I set. Saw the floor, I saw the floor plan. But I, I, I'm, I'm not, I was trying to channel my inner trusty Brady, um, who, yeah. who had quite a, quite a bit to say a lot about building materials and, and aesthetics and, um, you know, curb appeal. Um, and and I'm, I'm not feeling it on, on this one as much. So as are, are we so used to seeing the, the, these, you know, properties that all look the same? I mean, because when, when we drive through here, you know, I'm right across the street, you know, so I drive through Northgate all the time. And so I'm looking at those townhomes and, and they remind me of everything that was brought to the village before me. I mean, you know, we've had other presentations where everyone wants to put that siding. And all we're trying to do is use a, a, a more expensive product to create a different view. I mean, if we, if we wanted to just go white siding, we would just put white siding above the brick and oh, call no, it a I'm day. Oh, no, I'm a brick fan. Uh, you know, I, I, I like masonry and, and uh, some of that brownstone look. I, you know, I'd like to see th that as opposed to what you're saying is more prevalent in the community of late. Well, um, it's, not, it's nothing to do with prevalence. I think it's just a matter of trying to design something that was a little bit more, you know, a little bit more to date versus just do, going old brick because then how do you accent that? You start to create you know, different things on, on, the, on, on the face itself in order to just alleviate that blend, you know, look. And I mean, that's a, a distinct possibility. I think the products that, that Hernando was trying to utilize are fairly expensive, and if, if the board wanted to see all brick, we would consider that at least on the front. Gotcha. Um, it is a fairly expensive product. The, the process that he just described is, is nowhere near a, a hardy board, you know, that you just screw on and call it a date. It's a very quality I think product. I would defer to Director Jennings about the, the use of that building material before I would comment on whether it's an expensive, more expensive product than um, that. Um, I, I'm all for ideas. I love hearing all new ideas. I, I love even more seeing ideas come to life, good ideas come to life. I'm, I'm just not feeling that this one is one of the good ones. So that's all. Thank you.
Thank you, Trustee Kruger. Uh, Trustee Rafato and then uh, Trustee Papantos. Thank you, Mr. President. So the, um, since we're on the, um, the stucco, uh, I think the, the question is, is that it's so overbearing that we try to use it as an accent, but this seems to be just all over. And I, that's where I'm coming from, too. And, and I actually don't like the style of the flat roof. I, I think it just. It's, we're not doing the flat roof. That, that's been changed in, in yeah, the see, uh, elevations. Unfortunately, unfortunately, what we have looks, looks like the flat roof. So that I is mean that, not a flat roof. Well, to me, that what I'm looking at here is, looks like it. So I'm just, it, just a bit confusing. And that's probably part of what uh, uh, you know, some of the changes that you've made. You know, if, if I look at the 1A5, to me that, to me from, from the appearance of it looking forward, it, it looks like a flat roof and the appearance just it doesn't, it really doesn't do much for me, the right. this whole concept. Uh, and also I'm, I'm concerned about the access and another piece of property just to the north of you where there, there's that single family home, um, to we're, we're going to have a, a development that's just right in the middle and you're going to have a, a hodgepodge of things if they decide to sell that in the future without aggressively looking at selling that and as Trustee Lang talked about the, the colonials and I'm, I'm concerned about the access to, to, this, to this property, just that access to it. As far as just uh, just going through there, and you know, I know trying to enforce uh, enforce the no parking, but that's very difficult to do when you're going to have you're going to have that continuing. That's not our job. I, it's not your job, but unfortunately, it's part of this. It's part of this. Debate. Right. Well, I completely understand. You know, your point about the enforcement of parking. I do personally can't possibly see a flat roof, but that's just a personal view. Right. I, I do agree, you know, there may be slightly right, a bit yeah. more use of, of the stucco material than I would like to have seen myself, to be perfectly honest with you. But I think this was a, a, a call by a designer, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if anything. And I'm not going to bury my designer. I'm just going to, I tried to defend it as much as I could, but, right. you know, that was his vision. And, you know, he felt that Everything looks so the same nowadays, you know, and and he just wanted to bring something different something that had a little flair to it And I think maybe he uh, out flared himself <laughs> That's all I had sir Thank you, Trustee Rufato. Trustee Papantos. Thank you um, I'm looking at your site plan and I can't get over the fact that it looks like you said how much can we fit in this spot and it's crammed in there. I'm thinking once you have people and cars and snow and kids on little bikes or whatever, um, it, it's too much for that area. I, I understand completely the grading and the, the shape of the site itself is almost impossible to work with, but um, it's just... Once people get in there, I'm not sure they're going to want to buy. And then we're going to have a project that's sitting there half empty or half completed. I also question where you came up with the 12,000 property tax because those people better start appealing their tax bills if that's what um, they'll be paying for that land size. You're, you're overestimating you know, there quite a there, bit. There's a $10,000 bill on an average rent, average for sale townhome <coughs> in Wheeling that's from 2013 and up. So I, I hate to defer. I, I'm just telling you what I know from... I'm just telling you what I know, so okay. unfortunately, you know, um, that's the number. That, that is yeah. truly a number. To tell you the truth, in looking at the design, I know you're looking for something different. Um, my first thought when I opened my packet and I was going through these were college dorms, apartments in the Southwest. Um, it really just kind of had that very routine, you know, what can we get by, how much do we have to do, there's nothing really outstanding. I, I kind of like the doors, but that's about it. I'm not sure where people are going to walk in any of these designs. I, I just don't think you're, I think you're trying to get as many homes on a very odd, small shape piece of land as you can, and I understand that. Um, you know, there's a, a cost-benefit ratio that you have to come to, but I don't think in the long run that it's going to be a project we need to see, at least in this configuration. 
Thank you. To be honest with you, I'd like to address that. Um, it wasn't an issue of, of how many townhomes can we stick on there. We would be asking for more if we, you know, if we could. That's not the issue here. I think that um, you do have to understand that, let's say, you know, in my conversation with Andrew and, and what I'm hearing from you, let's say this, town, this development got down from 15 or 12 to, let's say, 10. Uh, what you're doing is you're putting a burden on a potential purchaser because what they're going to end up doing is, well, two things happen, really. One thing is the village doesn't get its share of revenue, and two, the people will end up having to pay for all that additional land that they cannot use. Uh, they have a backyard. They have a front yard. They have plenty of land that they would be willing to pay taxes for, and obviously makes the thing unviable economically, as Andrew aptly pointed out, because once you reduce the number, you increase the burden, and that obviously makes that unsellable. Now, you know, as far as the design of the townhome, if, if uh, you know, I, I heard two, two of the trustees clearly say you're not happy with the, you know, with the way it's, it's cluttered and put together. It's the shape of the parcel. Uh, the parcel could definitely take even more, you know, or, or less for that matter. It, we fit, we, our engineer, you know, here he's sitting right here, um, went through a number of scenarios. And I think we sent a number of scenarios to, to staff. And so, and, you know, we had an opportunity <coughs> to talk to them going back and forth. Um, you know, this project came in in the number of 12. It was a, a slightly less cluttered product. I mean, it obviously still looked the same. Unfortunately, I can't change that. You know, that's the flavor here. And so, uh, you know, that's, but the project was a 12-unit project. The, the way we, the reason we increased it to 15 is simply because we felt that this piece of land that, that you own is simply there to support a potential project. and and how much better can it serve you if it created revenue? And so we increased our project from 12 to 15 just so that we can utilize that particular situation. Um, otherwise, we'd be here for the 12 unit. Now, that wouldn't have changed at all on the, on the, you know, the way that the project looks and you, know, you guys not liking it very much, but um, that's the fact. You know, we would have been here for the 12, and that's the only reason, the sole reason we're here for 15 is because of that particular situation. So. Um, if you don't like the way it looks, well, give us a suggestion. You know, tell us what you'd like to see. Uh, I heard, you know, Miss Kruger uh, say that she'd like to see old brick. I don't know. I might do that. I don't know. We haven't calculated that because, you know, we looked at something that we calculated a different product, and so, you know, I don't know. It's hard to say uh, because I, I believe the the product that our designer was proposing is, a, like I said, a fairly expensive product, and so. It may be in line, maybe even cheaper than, than buying brick veneer and putting it on the second floor. You know, it's just as simple as that, really. I mean, we're, we came in with a product, and it's obviously the question from Andrew was do you want to see townhomes there? You know, because if you don't want to see townhomes there, then it doesn't matter whether we're asking for 15 or 12, then it's just, that's just it. But if you do, then obviously tell us what you want to see, and we'll try and make it happen. You know? That's why we're here. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Pontos. This is a concept review, so that is basically what we're looking for. Yeah. Not necessarily the detail, the brick, the color, but just the concept. But we have touched on some very important uh, aspects of that, the density, the, the sidewalks, the access. Um, Mr. Sfond, uh, you know what, I want to chime in a little bit. I, I, actually, I actually don't mind the, the look that your designer came up with. Uh, your architect may have outflared himself. I like that. <laughs> Interesting. Um, <clears throat> I, do think your, uh, I do think your perspectives are generous with the boy kicking the soccer ball through the grassy area, and then when you look at the uh, site plan, there's not a whole lot of grassy area that is yours. Um, uh, I, where, where do we go next, Mr. Spondelis? Uh, it's a simple question of, is the village board in favor of the concept? Uh, I, I think as, as very well put, this is really about, do you want to see townhomes on this property or not? Uh, that is the concept that's before you. It's as simple as that. Thank you, Mr. Spondelis. Mr. Vito, did you have? Yeah, I just had one comment. I mean, I'm not against the concept of townhomes back there, but I think the price point's going to be your biggest problem. I, I don't see you selling $350,000 townhomes when, I actually when, do. when your prospective buyers have to drive through Colonial to get back there. Um, and I'm not besmirching Colonial. I'm just being completely realistic about it from a real estate perspective. I, there's no way. I mean, you can get single-family homes for cheaper in Valley Stream. Um, if you're spending that kind of money, you're just not going to spend it there. But that is going to be your risk and your problem. You're not asking for TIF money. You want to put it back there. I think the access is horrible, but 
but it is what it is, um, you know, and there's nothing else that's going to go back there. We can't put a store, you can't put... Can't do anything. Anything, uh, other than some type of residential. A continuation of apartments might work better, um, to we be We tried. Actually, the, the very original, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but the very original project uh, that we started with was uh, to put a 24 unit on there, because you can't put much more than that. But then it becomes economically unfeasible as well, uh, because, you know, you have to elevate it and, you know, the garage space, you have to, you know, cut all into that, uh, all in, in, into that whole area right there in order to be able to accommodate. Right, right. Um, well, that is what it is. I'm not, I'm not against the concept, as this is a concept review. I'm just not sure how successful the concept will ultimately be. Making concept meet mesh with code. What's that? You're not not mesh sure with about code. Mesh with code. I'm, I mean, economically feasible for the developer, not. Well, that as well. Yeah. So the question. Dave Vogel, too. Oh, Dave. Mr. Vogel, they forgot about you. No, I they didn't. I, I'm listening. Um, you know, I'm not against the concept either of townhomes back there, but I just, as many of them, I know, reiterate what some of them said real quickly is that I don't think they're going to sell back there with what's in front. Um, I know that's our problem, that's the village's problem, that's something we got to take care of ourselves, but I hate to see us have you spend more money and go forward and then at the end either kill a project altogether or it not be successful. And I realize I understand Joe's point of view. That's your risk. It's your money. But at the same time, an unfinished product back there doesn't reflect well on the village. So I, I just can't, can't go along with it at this point in time. Well, I would ask you then to assist me in, in cleaning up that street and, and actually making an effort of, of you know, bringing that we street up been. to the standard of, of all the other streets here. Because I think that we, we have been and will continue working. It's not easy. Um, but... Uh, like I said, that's our problem, and, and we will work at it. Well, you know, that, that is a wonderful statement to make. I, I'd love to hear, I'd love to see you guys work on that. I'd love to see something happen there, because there's, you know, hodgepodge of, of, of repairs on, on the buildings, and they're old. None of them look any, any reasonable, I would say, especially on the roofs. I mean, I flew, uh, you know, uh, uh, what you call it, over the area, and, and I got to tell you, those roofs, oof. Uh, thank you, Trustee Vogel. So, so again, the, the question that we're actually being asked is, uh, is the board in favor of the concept of townhomes uh, on this lot? So, uh, Clerk Simpson, why don't you just do a roll call? Uh, Trustee Vogel. If that's a simple question, yes, but... Yes? Yes. Trustee Papantos? No. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Uh, no, not at this time. Trustee Kruger? No. Trustee Raffato? No, not at this time. President Horker? I, I think residential, and I'd, I'd say yes just because okay, it's four to residential. Three. Yeah, so four it doesn't notes. matter, does it? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Um, item I? Yes, please. Um, 13i, discussion regarding concept review for a phase plan unit development, El Agrego Senior Housing Development, southwest corner of Lake Hook in Milwaukee. Mr. Svondilis, thank you. Please explain. Uh, similar to our previous presentation, uh, I will read a, a standard paragraph so that everyone is aware of what we are discussing uh, this evening, then turn it over to uh, Director Jennings. Um, Economic Development Director Milanofi uh, plays a role in this particular project um, and we will then uh, be open for uh, comments and discussion from the board. There are two questions that the board will be asked uh, as this is the second uh, concept review discussion for this particular uh, project and those two questions are first is the board in favor of the concept plan for the proposed Allegro development with details of the future phases to be provided at a later date? And second, is the board in favor of providing a pay-as-you-go TIF incentive for the development while the only known land use is a residential care facility? 
The current request for a non-binding approval of the proposed PUD concept. The feedback by the board will be used by the development team as a guide in the preparation of the formal development plan. The outcome of this evening shall not constitute a formal approval or denial of the application. The decision by the board tonight is non-binding and shall not prevent the applicant from moving forward with a formal application. Director Jennings. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of notes before I introduce the development team. Uh, this is a plan year development. Uh, it is a plan year development that uh, you have seen one time previously. Uh, following the review uh, with the board, uh, the previous review with the board, uh, as the petitioner was working through the comments uh, and, and working to adjust the plan, uh, the staff also was working through the proposal and, and determined that there was uh, a question that needed to be asked uh, slightly differently, uh, which is one of the reasons this is required to go back for a second concept review. Uh, so in addition to the fact that they were adjusting the plans in response to the, to the board's comments, uh, this is technically a multi-phase PUD, and inherent in the question that uh, Manager Svondelis just read is, a, is tied to this concept review is the concept does involve uh, a, a second phase or a second and third phases possibly uh, that would be presented uh, in a, a somewhat vague form at this time. Uh, if the concept does move forward, uh, the code allows uh, the phase that is more firm, which is the Allegro uh, housing development, it would allow that phase to move to the final PUD, uh, while the other phases uh, could be marketed utilizing the preliminary PUD approval uh, to show potential buyers for that, that portion of the development uh, the uh, more concrete plan than what they currently have. Uh, the, the petitioner has been working with the village to, uh, to market the, uh, the additional land uh, and, and the seller has been working as well. So the three parties have been working to market the additional land to uh, uh, end users. That, that has not uh, produced results, uh, as you uh, can see in the staff report, that hasn't produced results to this date. Uh, but they're hoping that by changing the strategy in this way, having a more concrete approval and showing that the, uh, the approval for the development is moved up to at least that preliminary PUD level uh, will aid in marketing the site. So that is one of the, the central questions uh, asked of you tonight is, uh, is that strategy is, is part of this concept, uh, using the PUD approval, preliminary PUD approval to market the site. Is that something you're in favor of? Um, with that, I would uh, introduce the, uh, the development team uh, to explain how the, uh, the plan has evolved since you last saw them in September, uh, and I'll have some additional comments uh, after they present. Thanks, Andrew, and good evening, uh, board and trustees and uh, staff. Josh Bauer here on behalf of Opus Development uh, alongside me. I've got Adam Novoy, also of Opus, our, our, our architect, lead architect on this project and Sproul Love of Allegro. Um, real quick, just wanted to introduce Opus, um, national developer focusing on senior housing, multifamily, uh, retail, office, student housing. Um, so def definitely capable of uh, building a very high-end project here. The subject property is at the southwest corner of Lake Cook Road and Milwaukee Avenue. And a um, little background on, on, the, on our meeting on September 10th of 2018, um, came before the, uh, the board and did receive a, a, a very positive feedback, 7-0, seven, oh, uh, seven in favor, zero uh, against the project. Um, but then we were uh, made aware that the site plan that we had presented was maybe not, not the best site plan. So we have gone back over uh, the last year almost and re-engineered the site plan to um, take your feedback into consideration and achieve a, a successful development. We understand and, and feel this is a partnership with the Village of Wheeling and we uh, take it seriously, the feedback that you've given us. So we've gone back and, and re-engineered the site plan and also as Andrew alluded to, um, now this is a multi-phase PUD. So we've engineered the plan to provide for future development of, of what we have as a hotel parcel and a retail parcel, but we can't 
100% uh, say exactly how those will be designed. We've only engineered the site to accommodate those, and we're just going to focus on our, uh, our senior housing parcel. <coughs> so um, with that, I'm going to introduce Sproul. We'll talk a little bit about Allegro, and then we'll uh, hand it over to Adam to talk a little bit about the design and the site plan of the project. Good evening. Thanks for another chance to present our proposal to you. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Sproul Love Thank you. with Allegro Senior Living. Uh, we are co-developers and joint venture partners with Opus. They've brought us in uh, as a senior housing developer and operator. We will manage the project. We also are helping develop the project. We have a 40-year history operating senior housing around the country. And uh, we work hand-in-hand -hand with Opus to design a building on this site that we think fits the market. Um, we were, I was reviewing some of our old email correspondence about the site, and uh, over the last two years, the demographics have continued to improve. You know, we, we want a, a building that's going to succeed and fill up quickly, and we think it, it fits well into this market. We currently have 20 uh, operating properties, seven under construction, including two in the Chicago area in Glenview and Evanston. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have about what we have planned here. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Adam Novoy. I'm the uh, architect on the project, uh, working for Opus. The, uh, this clicker does work, right? Oh, no. You can scroll, and it'll go to the next slide. Ah, here we go. I Thank saw you. I your work on it. I'm just going to cruise through some of these slides. Some of these slides here, uh, since we presented before, um, there are some old, old slides, uh, some of the site context slides that we'll kind of breeze through a little quickly. And then we'll get into um, the, the latest site plan that uh, uh, will generate some interest, we hope. So as Sproul uh, mentioned, uh, as, as far as uh, Allegro, uh, those are the first couple of slides. Once we get into the, the site context, um, you see the, uh, the site um, is dictated in the, the kind of panoramic view. Uh, it's kind of uh, 180, 160 degrees kind of splayed out. So uh, that's the site around a six acre site, a little bit more than six acres that are now in the, the front part of the uh, off-ramp to Lake Cook. Uh, in the background, so up, we're sitting, we're at the north end of the site, uh, looking south, and then we see Prairie Park uh, in the background, um, as, as well as the uh, water tower. And to the far right, or the west, we have um, all the grove of trees, uh, and into the western uh, developments there. Uh, after receiving the feedback from the last time, um, we've positioned the site uh, more in the, uh, the northwest corner of the property. The property is around 17 acres. However, uh, there's a, several acres, majority, that are, um, that are in the wetlands and floodplains. So really, you know, call it uh, nine or 10 acres are really uh, land that can be developed. And then once you carve out um, the infrastructure associated with, with those parcels uh, and the detention, um, it becomes a, a, a little bit difficult of a site. The site does fall uh, in, in grade uh, to the south and southwest. Uh, so as we kind of look at the more detailed, oops, oh yeah, sensitive, uh, detailed site plans, this is the old site plan that we, we brought to you for a uh, comment almost a year ago. And uh, our first blush at it was to position our site, um, our senior site, to the southern edge of the property, leaving uh, what's shown as outlot A. Uh, kind of the more desired property uh, to the north, uh, leave that open for future development, thinking that uh, it had more exposure to Lake Cook and, and have a, a nice prominent uh, position there on the site. So we thought we'd anchor our building uh, to the south. And then after further review uh, and comments uh, to kind of look into repositioning the site, thinking about it a little bit differently and, and putting it almost in the position or near the position of outlet A, we've come up with this site plan. So as you can see, the kind of X-shape uh, senior project is, is anchored in the northwest corner. Um, the, as far as the site access, the, the bridge is, is under construction, of course. Um, so that's really a fixed point uh, to the east uh, off of Wolf Court. 
and then the dedicated uh, right in, right out of the off ramp to Lake Cook is another fixed point. And so the site for us actually really laid out quite nicely as you uh, take that, that axial line from the bridge and bring that uh, to the west, northwestern uh, corner of the site, position the building uh, on that axis, and then connect the dots from the right in, right out uh, lane and bring that uh, perpendicular to that the new <coughs> axial roadway to the building, uh, divided the building into a few parcels. Um, the senior site, of course. Uh, what's left is the uh, uh, little over one acre outlot A, uh, part of the site to the, to the northeast. And then uh, a little over two acres uh, to the south, outlot B. The pond is positioned uh, really due south, and that's, that's shown in about an acre uh, of land dedicated to that, that pond. Again, the, the site falls in that direction, so it's, uh, it really lends itself uh, to being uh, placed there uh, very effectively. And then the, uh, the roadways uh, to get to the site. You know, there's uh, circulation around the site uh, for vehicles. Uh, each one of the uh, independent assisted and memory care uh, portions of the building have their own uh, door, their own kind of uh, key to the house, if you will. So uh, to that end, each uh, uh, end of the building has its own uh, entry, um, in some cases a port cocher, um, and kind of entry sequence so that um, uh, visitors kind of see that uh, they have their own identity th to, their, to their part of the building. Um, and then as you, uh, there is a, a way of, there's that mouse. Um, there is the potential is that loop road uh, circulates farther west. Uh, that makes a nice uh, connection to, to the parks and recreation site to the far west uh, for nice future development uh, with whatever uh, you choose to position there. Uh, nature center, pavilion, outdoor pavilion, uh, trails, whatnot. Uh, the pedestrian experience is another uh, very positive uh, uh, amenity to the site, and we're showing that with this uh, yellow dots, if you will. So there's uh, a nice connection that we have to Milwaukee Avenue. Uh, we could come in over the bridge there, uh, come right, and this is just constant, of course. It, there's so many different variations of the pedestrian paths that it could really intertwine and, and, and uh, intertwine through the site, uh, swoop around uh, that circulation road, uh, connect with the trail system to the Prairie Park. Uh, to the south, uh, along that, that creek that runs in this direction. It could follow that creek bed. And whether you come in with that pedestrian path connection there, uh, through the woods, uh, or both uh, to the, uh, the developments to the west, that would be a very nice uh, amenity, not just for uh, the senior housing project, but uh, to what could happen as well with the hotel user, perhaps on the outlot B, uh, to uh, the surrounding community, to uh, Prairie Park and, and all the other communities to the south as well. So that's the really uh, uh, good uh, effective use of the land, uh, considering that uh, majority of this, all this right here is in the floodplain. I'm sure I didn't skip another slide here. I'm sorry for the sensitivity. Uh, so an image of the elevations, um, a combination of uh, red brick and smooth and textured fiber cement. Um, and then as you can see that, that main central entry is a nice uh, um, atrium, interior atrium is part of the Allegro model. And then as the, uh, the wings of the building splay off uh, from that hub, uh, a lot of interest with undulations of the facade uh, with alcoves for uh, balconies, uh, a lot of glass, um, and, a, and a really nice um, almost market quality apartment sort of building. Uh, there's a lot of numbers, a lot of words, and small print, so I'll just highlight a few of them for tonight. Uh, the total square footage were just over 220,000 square feet. Included in that is uh, just over 31,000 uh, basement square feet for parking. Uh, we'll have uh, proposed uh, 80 spaces um, in the basement and then another 80 surface parks uh, included in that number. The areas in red are uh, our variances or our uh, our asks uh, on this project. And so with the maximum FAR of 20 units per acre, 
Um, we're asking for 27 units per acre. Uh, the, especially the, the memory care units are typically smaller units. So uh, due to that nature, they don't have uh, kitchen facilities. So those units tend to be smaller. As a result, um, we're, we're able to put uh, more units uh, into that project. Uh, then as far as the maximum height, um, the code says three stories. We're asking for four. And then the minimum uh, floor area for the dwelling units at 675, and we're asking for uh, less than 490. Uh, the parking analysis, um, again, as I mentioned, uh, 80 cars uh, surface parked and uh, 80 below grade. Some of the unit finishes, uh, again, uh, really market rate apartment uh, quality of finish, uh, uh, even better uh, in some cases. Uh, Really nice uh, earth tones uh, and uh, millwork packages. Very nice amenities, very nice appeal. Uh, some of the, the building amenities, uh, these are just a few, but some uh, dining uh, facilities, some public spaces, uh, different places to, uh, to break out uh, in, in social gatherings or to, uh, to be alone if you choose to, uh, to have that time by yourself, fireplaces, um, salon, uh, theater. A lot of very nice amenities in the space, and, it, and very much a, a connectivity to, from the inside out. So a lot of glass, uh, as you can see, the outdoor space. There's a lot of glass. So if you're inside, you could look out to the pool deck. Uh, again, nice outdoor seating, uh, nice uh, exterior lighting. And then just to kind of look at the projected timeline. So moving from left to right is, is uh, we sit here today with the, the, the concept review. Uh, we'll start to then move into um, uh, further site due diligence uh, with traffic studies and soil borings, um, uh, CDOT, um, you know, working with, with all those uh, civil engineer and kind of getting a better understanding of the site uh, and, and its constraints. Uh, and then we move into the preliminary PUD review. We know that's a multi-step, multi-meeting process. Uh, and then if we're on track, uh, closing the land uh, projected around May of 2020 and beginning construction shortly after. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Jennings, uh, you want to talk about the special use and site plan concerns? So the, uh, there's a lot of material in your packet. I'm not going to uh, review all of it. Uh, the petitioner has been here previously for the, uh, the, what is the first phase of this proposed development. Uh, and, and as was stated earlier, the board did not have any major concern with the uh, assisted living facility. Uh, being a part of a larger development, it was just kind of a question of how it worked out. How, how does it relate to what's around it and what ultimately will be around it? So in some ways, uh, the central question on the land use uh, remains the same. Uh, we've approached the staff review uh, by uh, explaining uh, how the petitioner has responded to many of the board's previous concerns related to uh, possible reimbursement for ambulance call to offset burden on uh, the the uh, the village uh, with that, uh, and then from the actual configuration of the site, the largest questions that we have are if the if the building itself, uh, the assisted living building itself, is arranged the way that it is, and that is a, uh, a more or less given. The arrangement, the X-shaped building, is being viewed as much uh, more or less a given. Now that they have arranged it on the west side of the site, the question, I think, from a land use perspective is, is the preliminary PUD set up for success at this point? Uh, again, this is concept, but the next stage of this would be preliminary PUD. And are, are there issues with the, uh, the access road, the east-west access road, bisecting the remaining land? Is there a need to preserve greater flexibility um, moving forward so that if there is a potential end user who's interested in three acres, does the preliminary PUD plan need to incorporate some flexibility for a larger parcel than the one and two acre parcel? Uh, perhaps the answer to that is no, but uh, it's one of the concerns that's noted in the staff review. Um, there's a question of TIF, uh, which Director Mulanafi uh, will present the staff comments on. Uh, the demand item, uh, I believe several of the, the um, trustees had previously asked for an indication that there is market demand to support the construction of this building. Uh, as the petitioners represented earlier, the, the uh, demand is 
uh, apparently higher uh, than, uh, than a year ago when you previously saw this. They did note that a, uh, a study was done. Uh, the summary of that study is included in your materials. Uh, the question the staff had on that was, uh, technically speaking, what the primary demand area is that the study is based on. We understand that you can't share uh, the, uh, the study itself, but just uh, explaining how the conclusions of that, uh, that study, what the meaning of the conclusions is, uh, we thought was necessary in order for the board to really understand uh, the summary itself. Um, connectivity in terms of pedestrian network, you've, uh, you've covered. Um, and then the other question that the staff review had in terms of land use related to the future phases uh, as you move on to preliminary PUD at this point, uh, the staff review is that it's not sufficient in terms of providing a framework for what could go uh, on the remaining parcels. So we just want to be clear that the expectation uh, would be that as this, as this uh, is developed, the, uh, there will be some type of framework. Right now, it's still in some respects a, a single phase in order for it to really be a, uh, a plan unit development, the plan would have to be uh, uh, firmed up a little bit. Um, any anything in terms of some limitation on land use, uh, limitations on height, uh, material ex expectations to make sure that this is a cohesive development. Um, but again, the, the biggest question that we had is, uh, is the, the strategy itself, uh, utilizing a, uh, a preliminary PUD approval to assist in the marketing of the, uh, the remainder of the site. Uh, is that a, uh, a, a strategy that the board is willing to let them try out um, uh, or not? And then there's the question of the, the TIF incentives, uh, which I will hand it over to this, uh, to uh, Director Milanofi at this point to discuss that. Thank you, Director Jennings. Uh, I'd just like to address the direct and indirect economic benefits um, that the Opus Group project um, would generate, including the financing, job creation, and uh, revenue generation. I mean, first off, I'd like to say, I mean, I've known Opus for a long time. Um, they're a very well-respected development company. And uh, I think the village would be fortunate to uh, work with such a high-level uh, developer like Opus. However, um, looking at the project today, um, as it's, as it's currently proposed, it's not going to generate any sales tax revenue whatsoever that we can see. Um, it will generate significant property taxes. That's a very nice looking building. Um, however, at this time, there, there are no commitments from any retail or other commercial uses, user, uses on, um, on the outlots that will produce sales tax revenue and uh, despite considerable effort, we've worked really hard at looking at other end users that might um, go on this site, on these, these two outlot sites, and, and we haven't been able to identify anybody at this point. We had some LOIs and so forth. Um, the, the residents uh, of the Allegro housing facility are not anticipated to contribute significantly to sales tax revenue. I mean, we might have some visitors. Um, that could spend in our restaurants and retail establishments, but you know the memory care and assisted living residents are not really good spenders, uh, like maybe an apartment building might be. Um, the job creation is limited to um, the senior housing um, facility, and uh, there are, you know, that would be the permanent jobs, and then um, any temporary construction jobs in terms of employment. Um, the developer hasn't submitted any formal TIF request uh, or a, an application, so at this time we're unable to perform any type of gap analysis to see where the gap might be. And uh, under a pay-as-you-go TIF agreement, uh, the time to create any significant increment is going to be minimal because the TIF district is going to end in uh, 2026. And even if you got built in the next couple of years, it's just there's not a lot of time um, to create increment. And we, and the village, as you know, has already invested almost three around uh, three million dollars on this site in terms of a lot of the infrastructure. So we would have to look at uh, you know what the gap is. But any additional TIF incentives appear to be unjustified at this time. We don't know what those those costs might be and what the gap might be. And that's really uh, basically my comments. Um, you know, we'd like to uh, work with you and um, see where, where um, this project would fit with the village. 
his objective. Thanks, John. Um, just to extrapolate a little bit on, on your comments on the TIF, you know, we didn't want to come in and just ask for um, TIF dollars until we're absolutely convinced that we need them. A, a huge part of whether or not TIF dollars will be needed is going to be based on Cook County and what they require for, from a deceleration lane uh, off of the Lake Cook ramp. And um, TIF dollars that were given to us in the event that, that we require them to move forward on this project, I just want to note they would not just benefit our project, but they would also benefit the retail pad and the hotel parcel. Ultimately, those TIF dollars would be used for access purposes and for connectivity, which is more important than in retail, quite honestly, than it is in senior housing. So um, TIF dollars that were given to the project, I just want to note, are not just for our one piece of property that we'd be developing. It would be to enhance the marketability of the entire parcel of land, the entire 17-acre parcel of land. We absolutely recognize the, uh, the TIF commitment to this point by the Village of Wheeling to build the bridge. I think it was a, a crucial step to, um, to, you know, to, to do that. So we absolutely recognize that. Um, but we, there, there could be a TIF request made. We just didn't want to put one in at a time when we weren't 100% sure how things were going to go with uh, Cook County Highway Department of Transportation. Absolutely. And, and certainly those outlots, we don't know what those could ultimately be and what are they going to try to request TIF funds for, for them for uh, their specific development. So it, it's just unjustified at this time because we don't have the answers. Thank you. Very fair. Thanks, John. Um, I, before we get into um, a, the, you know, the non-binding vote, I just wanted to say, uh, one, we appreciate the opportunity to be back in front of you. Uh, we're excited about the prospect of, of building here. Um, a lot of efforts to date have been made, uh, not only by OPUS, but, but staff and Mr. Smith. Um, we've gone through 15 iterations of site plans on this project, maybe more, trying to figure out uh, a way to get the most amount of buildable square footage here. Um, where we sit today, we feel like is a great, is, is a fantastic option. It allows for uh, three different projects. We, we did have some LOIs that were traded on the hotel parcel. No one has gotten there yet, but the fact that hotel groups have looked at it, and ultimately I think it was tax issues, so I think the site itself worked for them, which is great news. So um, we all feel really good about this plan and where we're at today, um, and just wanted to end with that. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, Trustee Kruger, then Trustee Rivato. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you all for coming back. And um, I think I want to start with saying thanks again for hearing the need for a market analysis. I think that was pretty paramount last time you were here, and I certainly wanted to understand why Wheeling, with five, potentially six, already in, t you know, seniors, facilities, did we need another one? But as Director Jennings mentioned, the, the third party contractor that you engaged to do this referenced the primary market area, but I don't know what that primary market area is. So can you disclose that primary market area? Uh, so that's a third-party market study consultant that we use on most of our projects. We have a relationship with them. We really trust their work. They typically look at a PMA that's somewhat larger than our site selection process. That's just how they work. 20-mile um, radius away so from your site? So it's about an eight-mile radius eight? for that study, yeah. And w we actually, the industry standard among... Uh, our operators across the country is typically five miles. We also look at a 15 minute drive time because obviously that's gonna be different. And we discuss the PMA and agree to that with the third party consultant. So we make sure they're aware of all the competition that we're aware of. You know, we work with our um, development partner who has, they have folks on the ground here, they know the areas of wealth that we will draw from. And so that's how we kick off a market study like that is we have a call, a call, we have a long conversation about what competition should be included and 
we agree on the PMA. So, so can that's you something we had. a little more on the results of that PMA? I mean, I'm, I could see what it says in here, but I'm just wondering when it says the um, estimated to be needed within this primary market area is one and a half times, this is independent living, one and a half times the amount proposed for this project. So <laughs> you're, you're developing something that will satisfy. So th there, we have a, a concept called captured demand. So, you know, we, and this is something that that uh, market study consultant operates, an assumption they operate under as well. We, we think that we can capture about 5% of the demand. Now, there are a lot of calculations that go into this. I, I, don't, I don't think you, I don't know if, if you want to, how much detail you want to go into. I don't have that report in front of me, but that is kind of a, a realistic assumption. And so through the calculations of income qualified seniors and um, a number of metrics, the, the final number that they spit out in their executive summary is a, an assumption of captured demand. So we look at all the metrics and then we think, okay, we can get four, four five, six percent of that demand. And they, this was a year ago, granted, that they, they did this study and they, the numbers they came up with were greater for the demand than the units that we're proposing. And, and we've actually, uh, decrease the number of units uh, down to 160. So we think it's a conservative proposal so given the one PMA and, a half times and the demand. the amount proposed at 100 and you're, and you're proposing 160 units. At the time or when we commissioned that study, we were actually proposing more units. So uh, I believe that they, uh, they supported the numbers that we were proposing, and we've now come down in the number of units. So, okay. so there's know, still, and the demographics have increased. So. Got it. So there still will be some demand it, after you yes. built. Got it. Um, the other thing I wanted to um, commend you for was uh, the ambulatory relationship and possible agreement. I mm -hmm. think that's, that's still one of my biggest concerns about uh, senior housing in the TIF district, is that mm -hmm. especially with no um, additional revenue and, and, you know, retail per se yet. Um, so that I think is the, is the big challenge for me. Um, but you're certainly making strides to move in the right direction. And I, I also wanted to just underscore that half of the units are independent living. So these are folks who drive, who get out into the community, who w will generate some sales tax, certainly more than the assisted living and memory care folks who do tend mm -hmm. to stay on the property. <coughs> Um, so I, I just wanted to underscore that a lot of the competition is just assisted living and memory care. So that is a difference. Got it. I, I want you to be um, aware of. And on the um, concept site plan diagram, that's the one that had like the circle, the site, and then the yellow um, out lots, and then the pond. That pond, that is comp storage, detention, is that part of the requirement for the area or decoration? So that is detention for the for the property. Okay. We uh, we're obviously at the point where we need to continue spending uh, money with civil engineers to verify exactly how much detention is going to be required. Right. Um, we we used a rule of thumb and and planted this here uh, based on what we know at this point. But after engaging civil engineers to do further studies, we'll know a little bit more about how much of how much detention will be required. And in that northwest uh, area that was listed as well, floodplain and over, couldn't detention have gone over? Could detention have gone over there at all? So the the detention cannot go in the floodplain or or um, approach wetlands. Also, that portion of the site in the northwest is the is the highest point of that site. So. Mm. Uh, you know, unfortunately, the, the detention has to be sort of where the water is it's draining to the low, low spot of the property. I was just trying to get more space over there. Trust me, we, we, we do too. We've looked at it and we're, you know, we're aligned. We, we, more than anybody, want to have two parcels alongside us that are developable and ultimately get purchased and developed too. Right. Um, we're all aligned here. So we, uh, we're with you. Well, thank you. And I'll let my colleagues move on. So. Thank you, Trustee Kruger. Trustee Rufato. Thank you, Mr. President. Then Trustee Lang. The, uh, the number of units, and, and I think you just answered it, but I just want to make sure. There's 140 units that are independent and assisted living, and you said half are independent. So 
is that 70 units independent and then 70 assisted? So, uh, I, it, so it's it's 140 are independent right. and assisted, and of the of that 140, approximately a a hundred would be IL and 40 would be there. It's it's maybe maybe 90 50. It's it's generally speaking of the 160 unit development. It would be about 50% of those units would be independent living, 35% would be assisted, 15 would be memory care. Um, at the time um, of the market study, the, the, those were our breakdowns, and when we refresh our market study, when we move forward here, that we would know exactly what the breakdown would so be. So then taking that further, uh, for uh, just using independent living as an example, uh, you said that within this within the primary market area, one and a half times the amount proposed. So you propose you're proposing let's use the let's use 80. What the pri what this study showed you is that there's actually a demand for 120. Yeah. So at the time of that study, we had 180 yeah. units. Mm -hmm. So let's just say um, it's a, it was 100. It was 1.5. So that then it would be the market study would have said 270 units would be the demand. Now we're only building 160, so the demand ratio is actually skewed higher now. It's probably more like 1.7. Not to mention demand apparently continues to rise and the demos are getting stronger, so it might be two, two to one now. Okay. Um, and when, when you mention amenities, and uh, I think Director Milanofi said, you know, these uh, the folks here aren't going to ge generate a lot of sales tax. Are you, are you going to have some type of little store in there or anything like that, or is it just rental units? Uh, so the community, inside the community, I think it's true. It's not gonna generate a lot of sales tax. We have kind of a sundry store where people, convenience store, small, mm -hmm. for, for the residents. It's not something that the public will come right. in and, and use. Uh, so. The amenities inside the building are really for the residents. Sure. My earlier point was that independent living residents go outside and dine, and they, they get outside of the community. I, I understand your market studies, but I, I, I'm just questioning the, the, the need for uh, this type of development uh, in the village. That's all I have right now, sir, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Rafado. Trustee Lang and then Trustee Papantos. So hear me out, guys. Opus Hotel Division. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Your building is awesome. It really looks great. And, and it, as a hotel, it would be like vision come true on that piece of property. But I know we're not talking about that, so I'll move on from it. Um, consider that division, though. Um, I, what I, what I am struggling with is, okay, I, I like how you reposition the site. That seems like it really will work better for even the outlots that are there. But my question now goes to Mr. Milanofi. You see the size of those outlots. There's a, a one acre site and a, a 1.8 acre site and a 2.4 acre site, oh, oh 04. Um, is there room for things to develop there that are meaningful? Is that enough room for what we were looking for in that balance of tax generating businesses to assist that piece of property? Uh, in great, your opinion. Great question, Trustee Lang. Um, certainly it would depend upon, be dependent upon the end user. I mean, we've seen uh, one of the issues here is there it doesn't uh, enjoy frontage directly on Milwaukee Avenue um, and so that's gonna um, in my opinion um, is going to um, hamper the ability to bring in um, a restaurant it's going to be behind a vacant Ram restaurant uh, or a fast casual restaurant um, if you look at some of the uh, other commercial uses um, that might be more destination locations, uh, whether, whether it be an office building or you, you mentioned hotel. Um, a a two-acre site could accommodate some of those types of uses. Um, it's not going to accommodate a full-service convention um, type facility, but could um, accommodate uh, a select service or a budget 
type um, or economy, um, hotel, or possibly even extended stay. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm struggling that the fact that, you know, and I know Mr. Milanofi has been working on trying to promote that site for that use for, for months and months, and we're not getting any takers. I'm, I'm struggling with the fact that we go ahead and develop this site and then hope that that sales tax revenue <coughs> generating businesses come. And, um, you know, and I'd love to see, again, I just want that balance to be on that property guaranteed. And, you know, I, your, your building and your use looks fantastic. It's, you know, where I'm struggling is just the other, the build out and, uh, and, and getting that overall balance. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, yep, that's all I had. Thank you, Trustee Lang. Trustee Papantos, then Trustee Vogel. Thank you. Um, I think, think a lot of what I have has been covered, and I agree with what Trustee Lang said. It's a beautiful building. I, I cannot deny that. My fear is we have a one-acre lot and a two-acre lot, and phase two and phase three may never come. And I'm really worried because of the size of those lots, they won't if we say to you, go ahead and build this senior living. Um, you know, what, what would be the rent for the independent apartment? Rough estimate? Um, it depends on unit size and location and view. But, um, you know, I would say on average, between 3500 and 4000 a month. Okay, and what does somebody get for their, let's, let's even say $3,000 a month? Um, so you get utilities and uh, weekly cleaning and uh, there's a meal plan. So assisted living and memory care, all meals are included, independent living, there's a meal plan that doesn't quite cover three meals a day. Um, but you know, you get access to all the amenities in the building. There's a stadium seating, movie theater. There's a pool. There's a spa. Um, so that's what you would get for independent living. I mean, and like I said, it's a beautiful building. Um, I'm not quite sure about an outdoor pool in, in this area. You're only going to get about three months a year, especially for seniors who, you know, want the water at 94 degrees or something. So we, we have an outdoor pool displayed, or it may look like an outdoor pool, but the, it would have an indoor component, so we're aware, well aware of the weather. Okay. <laughs> I was <laughs> kind of wondering. Yeah. Um, you know, you, they can ice skate during, <laughs> sorry. Um, you know, if you had flipped this and told me you want to start with phase two and phase three and that, and the senior living component was going to be um, last put in, I would be all for it because it is beautiful. But I am concerned that we're just never going to see those other two phases built out. As Trustee Kruger pointed out, I really have a fear of what a senior living site is going to do for our um, fire department, our, our ambulance service, and yes, you may be willing to help pay for it, but there comes a point where we just don't have enough people to respond to the calls, especially for the assisted living in the memory unit. I mean, that's the, the heart of our calls, and we have to look at it. This is in a, a TIF area. I'm not seeing any sales tax being generated, hotel tax. That's what I really want to see for this area at first. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. Trustee Vogel? Can you uh, tell us what the estimated construction cost is? I, I have not looked at the pro forma in a little while, but I, I think it's uh, $200 a foot, somewhere between $200 and $220 a foot. We haven't exactly priced it because we're still trying to figure out a site plan. Um, so maybe $40 million. Oh, that's, that's total development cost, so hard costs. 
Total forty million. Okay. Um, have you have you gotten, or is this uh, going too too far ahead? Any agreement yet on the Lake Cook access exit? So we're. We've engaged our engineer to provide us proposals to sit, start sitting down with, with them. We're, we have to provide a, 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 some engineering to them in order to start to have those conversations. So we haven't gotten any feedback at this point. We, the, the goal was to, uh, to, to get feedback that was positive about moving forward with this so that we could start to spend some additional dollars on engineering and ultimately get that feedback. Okay. Uh, they mentioned like the uh, ambulance calls. Did we, Chief, did we establish a baseline or are we working on a baseline or is this going to be something that can be easily worked out? The problem is cost goes up every year, as you know. And the this type of facility, we have two in the community right now where independent has become assisted living. These people don't move out. They, move, they stay and their level of service demand changes as they stay there. Um, nobody forces them to leave. Right. So um, the number that's being presented here is a moving target. Okay. So it's really not something that can be established. All right. Um, you know what? I, I think there's a real need for this. Um, and I think that actually this may spur other interest in that property up there. That's seeing something being, being developed there. We get the infrastructure in there. And uh, I'm not I'm not so concerned about the other two outlets being developed um, with the infrastructure in there. And if you get the access exit off of Lake Cook Road, I actually I believe uh, that, uh, like I said, it'll spur more interest. So I'm in favor of going forward with this. Mr. Vogel, the uh, movie Feel the Dreams came to mind. You know, if we build it, it'll come. So that was uh, one thing that kind of came to mind as I was looking at kind of the generation of these site plans as we've churned them over and over and how it's kind of morphed into this, uh, this corner of the, uh, the lot that, uh, that there is that opportunity to, you know, place that building in the far corner and then, you know, allow the developments to kind of come uh, towards the street. So. Which is exactly what we asked for, so. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Vogel. Trustee Vito? Yeah, I, I, I've always liked the plan. Um, I think it's it's a good design. It's a good spot for it. Um, the TIF in that area, I mean, there is going to be tax generated. The TIF in that area is going to run out in 2026. 20, There's going to be a significant uh, amount of, of increased property tax in that area. Um, I don't have the huge concern that every square foot of this town gets developed immediately. Um, you know, I mean, we saw another project tonight where, you know, well, what else is going to go there? It's been vacant forever. It's just sometimes there's vacant land. Um, so I'm not really concerned about that. I, I am a little concerned about getting a hotel there. I don't I don't know if it's big enough. I, you know, John would know better than I would, so I'll take his word for it. But um, it seems a little, a little small, but, it, I mean, it is what it is. I, I think uh, you have a good plan. We shouldn't foreclose on that plan or preclude that plan just because the other two lots aren't anchored in uh, if we have a good plan moving forward something that I, I think there will be some increased sales tax if you bring in more people in uh, especially in so close to that western area even people visiting are going to want to take their people out uh, you know they're not going to want to sit there they're going to want to go to Spears for lunch or go to Cooper's Hawk for dinner or whatever um, so I, I think that would help as well um, so overall I'm in favor of the plan I think it's a good design um, so I'll wish you guys the best. Thank you, Trustee Vito. Um, I do understand the need for the use. Um, I, I am concerned about the viability of, of the outlots uh, relative to getting a commercial use in. Just there's, um, and just uh, the a one acre lot and a two acre lot, uh, it, they are doable. I, I just for just out of curiosity, I just uh, the the ram would actually fit on a one acre plot. I mean, it's right. It's on your paper, so I cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it. it yeah. Fits. You, you can get about six thousand square feet of but rentable I mean, on a lot of. Yeah, but there is no parking. Yes, that's true. Um, but 
But there is still the, yeah, and the RAM is closed, so, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, but it is a, it is a concern. Uh, the, the access is the concern. I do understand the need for the, the service. And I, are, are you going to hold the property once it's built? Is this going to be an investment that you're going to keep, or is this going to be... We, so our plans are to, to finish construction. There's a two-month period for stabilization of the property. To, did I say two months? That's a, that's a dream. Um, yeah, two years. And then typically Opus, as a, a merchant developer, we, we sell our interest. Allegro uh, would possibly stay on as the operator and, and owner there. So... Um, Can I just give us the name of the gentleman for Allegro for the record? Cause the name? His, Spr Sproul. Spell it? Sure. S P R O U L E is my first name. L O V E is my last okay. name. And, yeah, oh, no, I meant the gentleman speaking in the background because. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Mike Youngerman. I'm the general manager of Opus Development Company here in Chicago. I'm sorry. We, somebody has to type these up. And, yes, understood. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I just, I just do have. Well, the, my, the question was relative to, you know, you know. Are, are you going to have a dog in this fight for the long haul? You know what I'm saying? Like who's so like he's going to be the one who's who's going to have to buy in and know that 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 project is going to be viable. That still doesn't tell me about the two outlots, but I I, I do actually agree with uh, Mr. Vito, Trustee Vito, that it's well, not we can't have it all at we're not going to get it all at once it seems, but you know. Yeah, so obviously it's it's a long process that we wouldn't be st stabilized here for for five years, four or five years. But yes, we obviously have a huge interest. Um, we would need the property to lease up in order to have a profitable development. And the development of these other parcels would definitely help with that. So we would have a vested interest in this for the foreseeable future, absolutely. So... Uh, so we come down to the actual question at hand, or questions at hand. Uh, Mr. Svandilis, what, what are those? Uh, the first question is, is the board in favor of the concept plan for the proposed Allegro development with details of the future phases to be provided at a later date? Uh, Take a, go ahead. Go right ahead, please. Uh, Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Papantos. No, because of the future development. V uh, Trustee Vito. Yes. Trustee Lang. I'm going to say yes. Trustee Kruger. I'm going to say no because I'm concerned about the outlots. Trustee Staying outlots forever. Trustee Rafato. And I'm also going to say no. I'm sorry. What? No. 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 And President Horker. Um, I, I, I've got too many worries about this. I have to be a no on this one. What did you say? No. No. Sorry. Four, have four no's and three yeses. <laughs> Call them out on it. Call them out? No. She, what? She's saying no. I'll question you guys. Do we do question two or no? Um, do we need questions? Do we? I don't think so. I mean, it's pre very preliminary anyway. Yeah. So, again, it's preliminary concept review, right? Yeah, I think the only reason we would we would ask question number two is if the petitioner were to come back, say, with some uh, development opportunities for the one acre and the two acre site, it might be helpful for them to know whether or not the board is willing to provide TIF on a pay-as-you-go basis. Okay. Is that fair? Okay. Trustee yeah, Vogel. Ask. Trustee Vogel. So what is this? TIF on a a pay as you go. If would, would you be say? willing to provide? Well, but see, this is hard because you, you don't if, know what the request yeah, is going to be. Now I'm a, either the yeah. amount can change. I mean, it's it's really a question that doesn't provide a lot of information yeah. to this developer. Originally, the question was about the Allegro development, not about right. the full package. So I, I I take that back. I apologize. It, it, I don't know that the question serves any purpose at okay. this point. Yeah, the TIF's probably a moot point at this point because if if it's four no's and three yeses, then we're we're not going to move forward on this. Okay. Would there be would there be value in asking the question and whether or not we would like to see them again if they could get some users? This is being a non-binding approval of the proposed PUD concept. 
I don't know. Should I have had this discussion earlier? <laughs> I, I don't know that Allegro is going to bring us end users. Is that a fair? For the, for the other parcels? Right. Just something, yes. So, yeah, we can't control. Yeah. We can't control that. All we can do is develop a plan that would bring them in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, official communications. Do you have some? Sure. Oh, oh. yeah. Um, I I would be uh, interested in in revisiting the hours on the, on the parking. Uh, for a little relaxation. I know Avalon came at one point, the guys there came um, for parking on the sidewalk. I've already requested a memo be written. Okay. Um, so we'll have information for you that um, you can use as a basis to make that decision if that's okay. Perfect. Thank you. Anyone else? I have one quick. Trustee Lang. Uh, the construction, well, not yet construction site for uh, the 7 Eleven gas station. Uh, they keep swinging that gate um, across the sidewalk. There's a gate on there, and that's pretty hazardous, hazardous to a bike rider or so on. So um, I don't know. They constantly it's constantly blocking the sidewalk, from what I see. Uh, it's not right now on the way over here, but if someone could please remind them that to please not swing it out the wrong way, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Lang. Any other? Trustee Papantos? Um, I just wanted to point out that we approved change orders this evening, um, saving the village $75,000 roughly. Thank you, Public, or, um, public Works, that you know, once again you're doing a great job, and it's nice to see some savings coming in instead of the money constantly going out. Nice. Thank you, Trustee Papantos. Um, well, you do have the bills before you for July 11th through the 31st, 2019. I need a motion for their approval. So moved. So moved. Motion, Trustee Kruger. We'll give the second to Trustee Rafado. Roll call, please. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papatos? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Rafado? Yes. President Horker? Yes, we have an executive session. Thank you all. We have an executive session this evening to discuss pending probable or imminent litigation as well as vacancies in offices of the, the village. I need a motion to recess into executive session. So moved. Second. Uh, motion, Trustee. Uh, can I clarify that's to, to discuss filling vacancies I'm sorry, yes. in the office, offices of the village? Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you, Tr Thank you. Thank you Mr. Ferrolo. Sure. That was a motion by Trustee Kruger, a second by Trustee Rafado. Roll call, please. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Papantos? Yes. Trustee Vito? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Rafado? Yes. President Horker? Yes. Recess.